no better way of starting this video than by deleting this chicken. And maybe this guy too. This guy's definitely excited. We have an ocelot in the tree right here just staring at the chickens. Buddy, if you want the chickens, you can just go down. Oh, never mind. There he goes. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome to the 9,000 Days Recap video. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the things that we had built. This planet is massive. I'm still in shock that we even have a planet still, and we have a nice escape hatch right here in case, uh, in case we have to run into danger. We have giant castle factories now. There's a new igloo I want to stop at, but there's also an achievement that I want to get, and in order to get that achievement, I'm gonna have to grab these leather boots off that statue real quick. We'll slap these leather boots on right here. I actually have some powdered snow that I can walk on, and there we go. Now that right there is a pretty easy achievement to get. I don't know how I didn't get that already. We're lucky enough to have this beautiful Hanging Gardens Parrot Sanctuary now. We also have the Ancient City Aquarium that started out this little five-episode series, and you know what, chicken? I'm just gonna have to see you later. This Ancient City project is wild. This all was- oh my god, wait a second. Look at all of these villagers. What are you doing up here? Get down, sir, and you get down over here, sir, thank you. Get down, get down, and get down. No more horsing around. And in the back of the ancient city was this giant aquarium that we had walled off. I love having the conduit in here because you can just swim around for as long as you want, and we have hundreds of tropical fish in here. Like I said, we're starting out the 9,000 day recap in the ancient city aquarium, so I hope you guys enjoy, sit back, and relax. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. As you can see, we are back in the ancient city. There's an iron golem in that house for some reason, and the villagers are making their way all the way over to this ancient city portal. This thing has been entirely reconstructed out of courts, and I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Thank you for watching. Still have some beacons here and there that we need to take down. Now, if you remember from last episode, there is one thing, one obstacle that we could not get past, and that is this giant skulk wall that was holding in a bunch of water. This glass plus all the skulk is holding in a metric gigaton of water back here. We have all of these tunnels constructed. They're connecting all the way out to this portal. They connect all the way over here to the nightclub. We have tunnels that go all the way over here next to the lush cave, and we have tunnels up here that host people's jobs and living sites. So it is safe to say these tunnels are a very important structure in the ancient city, and I think what I'm going to do is start here. We'll block any flow of water with the bed. Let's take some glass out right here, take some glass out right there, and uh, yeah, we're going to actually have to bring a conduit in now that I'm remembering that I can't breathe. Get all this deep slate out, we'll replace it with the bricks and the oak wood and the spruce wood. But first, you know, let's just go home, let's grab that conduit. Of course it's raining. It is always raining in this world. We actually, you know what? We do have a conduit right next to the nether portal right here, actually. But this is providing us with ultimate breath while we're getting amethyst from the amethyst farm. It's pretty nice to be able to breathe down in here. So I'm thinking we actually do have a conduit all the way back here by the cleric trading hall that we don't really use for anything. Float on over here by the mud starter house. We haven't been over in this area in a good long while. This conduit right down here, we've been ignoring this guy for months, maybe over a year now. Sorry buddy, I'm gonna take you, thank you very much. Take the rest of this prismarine with me. Let's take this little guy to his new home. Actually, while we're in the nether, I'm gonna show you. We actually do have a little baby hoglin over here. I've been trying to give him some hugs, but he just will not allow us. We're gonna give him just, you know, just a little bit of time to warm up to us. But if you guys have a good name for this guy, let me know in the comment section down below. Floating back gently to the tunnel. Let's get back in that water now. We probably want to set up the conduit somewhere in the middle over here. So I'm actually, I might just set it up maybe up against this wall for now. Place this guy down here, take you out. That was just in time too, because now I can breathe. I have one bubble left in my breath meter. Put this here, and we'll put this here to close it up. I love the way these look when they're done. Feels like a device that'd be used in outer space. Also, I am never gonna get over how cool these conduits look with the shaders on. Well, now we can see everything a lot more clearly down here. We have the whole tunnel. We're gonna get this guy going first. We have the tower. Let's replace this guy with quartz. This whole building right here, we might need to excavate a little bit of the deep slate, put some kelp down so that we can get some water source blocks, and then replace this building with some quartz, as well as this guy right back here. I don't really see a building right here, but we can always make some new starter houses over in this area. After we get this tunnel done, I think what I'll do is replace all of this skulk with just a little bit of glass. Actually, let's go up here. What is up in here? Well, we found a cave, and uh, let's just, let's get out of here. There's no need to be there. Looks like a little opening right here getting blocked by some campfires. Not too bad. First things first, let's get these bricks replaced up in here. Grab the shears out of here real quick. Let's start taking out all this wool. Thank you very much, Efficiency 5. And let's bring in all the oak wood. These campfires are automatically put out when we lay them down. Got a little bit of kelp growing here right now. I'm actually just going to keep on multiplying it. Let's go down here, smack it out. 
you go here and you go over here. On the area that's not covered up by water, under the bricks, we did put the lanterns, and on the chains, we put the end rods, but end rods do not go underwater, so for right now, we're laying some lanterns there, and that right there is a not a source block of water. Let's see if I can grab something from right here and put it right there. Now we have the conduit to be able to see a little bit better, but it is nice to get the lanterns up and running over here, and we can actually go right into the secret entrance that leads right over to this barn. Only these cows and sheep know exactly how to get in back here, but we probably should clean it up. I actually think I think I have some torches on me. I do. Let's lay some back here. I don't know if anything's going to be able to spawn. We have a couple of sensors back here still. This area back here, I don't know if this is technically part of the ancient city, so yeah, we're gonna get the walls lit up. Oh yeah, definitely back here is not part of the ancient city. I'm thinking this is going to be a little bit temporary anyways. We'll probably close this off, but over here actually leads back into the underwater area, and it'd be cool if we submerge this whole area right back here. And this skull back here cannot forget this guy. Actually, you know what? You're coming here with me right now. Right now, this skeleton skull is my most prized possession in the game. Swim back towards the entrance, and we'll start to hang some lanterns up top. Now for the classic stone bricks all the way along the bottom. Mix that up with some regular stone blocks. For the most part, this build is pretty structured, but this right here is the one part that's pretty randomized. Close that up here. Got some Russian water here to close up. Now we just gotta slap some of these stairs down. We have a lot of deep slate over here to remove still. And placing down some of these stairs, you're just gonna have to waterlog them. Like this guy over here, he needs to get waterlogged too. Sometimes even placing a lantern down will make a water source block go away. Looks like we got one more guy over here to get back. Not looking too bad, except we do have a lantern right here to place, and I believe a lantern right here to place. We have a lot of Russian water still right here, actually. I believe we should probably start taking out more deep slate right here. One by one, all these blocks are just going to be water source blocks as soon as we get all this kelped up. Slowly, this water is actually going to get over and start ruining the terrain, I just realized. Something we're just gonna have to deal with though as this is too important. A lot of this kelp should be nice and big by the time we're done excavating anyways. Get a couple more over here and actually now that I'm thinking about it we could start replacing this deep slate with something. We did use a lot of quartz on the portal. The quartz bricks could look good on the floor. Let's uh well let's take out a layer of the floor as we keep on taking out this deep slate over here as well. Let's at least give ourselves a little bit of room before we start putting the floor in. Take all this skulk and random deep slate away from the side of this tower, too. Just gotta shave it all down. All these skulk veins down here making these open air blocks. Let's get all these out of here. Actually, let's just get the rest of all of this skulk. We're gonna end up turning all this into quartz bricks anyways. Let's head back over here real quick and see exactly what we can do. These are looking pearly white, and it's getting me thinking the amethyst tower over here. We could bring it to life. This thing was quartz, but uh, now it could be amethyst. I have a feeling we're going to have to head back to the mason trading hall and get a lot more quartz. Got our emeralds all the way back over here. They're coming in handy. Thank you for the block of quartz, sir. I really do appreciate that. I believe we have enough materials to get it finished. We're in this back hallway getting this done. Redstone be gone. Deep slate be gone. Thank you, guys. That is going to do it for the first floor, though. For the most part, I'm probably going to take a couple layers of the deep slate walls away. But now we have a giant open quartz floor, and all we have to do is start kind of placing some bone meal down, which I do have on me right now. We're going to get some grass and some more kelp around here. This ocean is already coming together. I think what we need to do is, honestly, this big old skulk wall, it's making this place look pretty dark, so we should probably just, let's get it replaced with glass. I already have the first layer here. But we can always get more, and as you can see actually out here, every time I place glass, a little bit more of the foliage starts to get uh, blown away, so we're gonna have to probably come pick more and more up. Take out the skulk, start letting it loose on the land out here, and just build up some glass towers. This right here is going to take a good while, so we're probably going to dedicate the entire glass wall to just the whole Twitch stream. By the way, I mention it every episode, but feel free to stop by anytime. It is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. We do stream every single day, so stop by anytime. Almost at the top, or at least where we want the top of the glass to be here for this aquarium, but we gotta get this cobblestone and this obsidian out of the way. This obsidian actually came from where this lava lake used to be. If you remember from the last episode, we had a huge lava lake that we needed to take out that was kind of hovering right over the portal. This whole area right here used to be lava. We took it all out with sand. We also mined a bunch of obsidian. Back home, we have a barrel filled with about 27 stacks of obsidian, so we are set. 
But here's the ancient city. This over here used to be all the lava. Over here actually used to be where all that water was. We took all the water out and then excavated this area down here, but we kind of forgot to excavate all of the deep slate after we took the lava out. And that's important because uh, actually if we take a step down, it's very much so in the way. Like this thing is just covering up pretty much everything. It actually goes up into a little bit of what used to be one of the buildings right here. Yeah, there's some deep slate right here. Cut through some of the foliage. We have a giant glass wall. And the only thing that's covering up is that tough deep slate and skulk mixture where that lava used to be. And if we go over here, there's a little bit of skulk and deep slate still messing up the side. So I am going to hop over. Let's uh, let's get the skulk out up here, and let's just start draining it out. It's going to be real nice once we can start to see from everywhere in the aquarium. We actually have a little bit of glass over here that we need to replace too. Still going to have to dig into this wall just a little bit because the glass barrier is going to have to reach over here as well. Walking through the halls of the portal over here, and we can finally see we have a big open glass wall. Probably need to start hanging some glow berries over here because if you turn around the rest Ooh, look at that sunset by the way, but we have glow berries pretty much everywhere except for right here So we should probably fly around and start getting these hung up a little bit one two three four pretty much You know what all the way across next to this aquarium will do now We can float on over here and start bone mealing these guys up bing bang boom and bop that already helps a little bit But uh, we're gonna end up putting a lot more I can't believe all of this was water and all of this over here was lava but it was worth taking all of that out because now we can swim in here and take a step back, turn around, and we have a giant open glass wall. I guess except for this little bit of deep slate right here, we could excavate that still. We just have to be meticulous about it because the water just needs to be able to create the water source blocks under this deep slate. But I don't want to dig too far in. We just want to do one row at a time. I'll probably get this done on a couple more Twitch streams. Something I am curious about, though, is if we place the leaves underwater. Oh, okay, cool. I was wondering if they were going to be filled with air, but it looks like they are underwater just fine couple things to fix on the bridge here let's uh let's fill this with water and then let's swim outside right here i kind of want to replace this brick stair with just a little bit of glass put one on the other side and now the glass wall is complete put in some signs on the glass here so we can get in and out without any water spilling and down here we still have some water so let's get some signs up on the glass this is going to stop any flow of water here and we should be able to actually just break the amethyst here here and here now we just have a wall of water this is perfect do the same thing on the right side. Smash through this glass and this amethyst like no one's watching. Now the reason we actually have all of this amethyst on us is because I was planning on using it to replace these deep slate structures. On the outside we did use the quartz and this time we're going to use the amethyst. First I guess let's get all this wool out of here. I guess we have a lot of candles we should get out of here as well. Still in the back of my head I am just hoping that there's no shriekers hiding out in some cave wall. That would be awful if the warden just came out while we were building the aquarium. Alright let's try taking this guy down piece by piece. We're going to replace him with some amethyst. Maybe actually we could use some purple terracotta and some purple concrete as well. Hearing this amethyst is going to sound so musical. And regarding the comments in the last video, a lot of people mentioned that they would like to see this turned into a dolphin sanctuary, but after thinking about it for a while, I'm just, I don't really know how I would get any dolphins down here. I'm, I'm just kind of confused as to how I would do that. So right now I'm kind of torn between bringing some axolotls in or the tropical fish down, a bunch of different types of tropical fish, because you can't really have both, so you gotta have one or the other. We already have an axolotl sanctuary, and we do have the axolotl dance floor, so probably gathering a bunch of tropical fish would be the more unique thing to do right now. Covering this thing with amethyst from top to bottom actually turned out to not be too bad. We can swim all the way around. I actually excavated a little bit back here as well so we can get a wall put up. Trying to get this to look as flat as possible, and now I kind of have it in my head to get the rest of this deep slate out so we can make it a perfect square. But that's for another time. I kind of want to focus on a little bit more of this detailing. We have a lot of the glowstone for just a little bit of light here, but if we take out some of this amethyst layering, we can start to add the purple concrete powder, purple terracotta. I actually have some blue terracotta too, because I kind of think that looks closer to purple than the actual purple terracotta itself. But the concrete powder will turn directly into concrete as soon as we place it, because we're already underwater. I'm hoping to add a little bit more texture with all these. The glazed purple terracotta could definitely find its way into this build as well. And now to try out a block that we've actually never used before, the purple blocks here. We're going to use the purple stairs to go up here. So that's not looking too bad, except we are missing some water sources. We'll pick up some water and we'll go over here and clean this right up. Get some stairs going through the middle. Got some more water source blocks to add, as always. And in the middle for this little mini warden statue. I think maybe we get some purple slabs going right there, some stairs going this way. Actually, wait, these are backwards. We'll go right here. Replace all these one by one. Make it start looking a lot cleaner. 
Now for these towers right here, actually let's just get these out of the way. I did say I was going to make these into some amethyst, but we used most of our amethyst for these little buildings over here, and also I'm thinking that might be just too much amethyst in general, so we're actually going to build this up with quartz again because we do know that the quartz does look nice. Start off with a row of the chiseled quartz, layer up with some of the bricks, start taking out these stairs, and of course get these replaced. Place four of the glowstone right here, and before you know it, you have yourself four exquisite brand new quartz towers. I just took this original one and replicated it three more times. I actually brought some deep slate back. Oh, ooh, there's actually a lot more that's still up here to pick up. This has taken a while to excavate, so we're pecking away at it very slowly, but the deep slate actually used to touch the top of this right here, so it took a while for us to get it out, but it's going. Slowly but surely, it will all be gone. We actually got some kelp all the way on the side here, too, to get rid of all the air pockets. We've expanded the quartz floor pretty far. We still have to get this big deep slate wall gone. These pumpkins down here are doomed to be underwater forever. This is where the entrance used to be for that little underwater cave where we found this back here where those final streakers met their fate. Purple block with the glowstone not looking too bad. I gotta figure out how to work with these ears. Swim back between the kelp, get into some open air real quick. I need to grab a bunch of quartz pillars. I have an idea for the wall. Let's just start in the corner up here and work our way down. Pillar all the way back up. Go all the way back down. And we'll probably alternate every other one. Let's go all the way back up. I think it's time to repeat this over and over until we have a complete square. This is actually kind of what I wanted to do to the other part of the ancient city, but with spruce logs, I ended up not really having enough time, and I didn't really realize how big the ancient city was before I lit everything up. The ancient city is enormous, and that would have just taken me a month in itself. It is a lot cozier in here, it's a much smaller space, and there's not much room to work with compared to at least outside, so these quartz pillars aren't going to take up too much time. You just need a couple bings, a couple bangs, a couple booms, and a couple bops. And before you know it, you have the left side done with a small amount of deep slate right here to still excavate. The back side, actually, we have all of that excavated. We still have one row of bricks to put down here. Kelp is still growing along this right side, which is done, and we have a small amount, I think just four layers of deep slate to take out. The beacon effect actually doesn't reach that far back here, but it might take longer to just go get it set up and come back here than to just stay here and get this finished. But we have been doing so much excavation, I think we need to give ourselves a just a, just a little bit of a break. I kind of want to get the coral set up. Everything in here for the most part is now just amethyst and quartz, and so I think we could add a lot of color. Let's take a flight home real quick. We actually have a brand new coral reef farm that I want to show you guys. Of course, it's raining. It is always raining. Take a quick nap and let the morning sun rise. We actually have to fly all the way over towards Rainbow Mountain for this farm. It's not every day we get to fly over this guy. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Along the south side here, we actually have in the middle of the warm ocean where all of this actually used to be coral. It is no longer. There we have a bare ocean and a little coral reef farm under what is a starter house design. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream here as well. This was pretty fun. It's a nice cozy place to get and just bone meal everything that we need. We have the amethyst up here that we can bone meal and gather coral with, and the shroom lights down here as well that provide some light. And uh, these two blocks, actually, that's the reason. I don't use a pickaxe or a hoe because they'll easily break with both of those. And so I actually just stick to using my silk touch axe and I gather the coral that way. I could just go search for more coral reefs, but I kind of feel bad just taking out every coral reef like that's anywhere near my house. We already took out this whole ocean, so I feel like this artificial coral reef farm is the way to go. You can actually also go down towards the legs here and just kind of bone meal this up too. Some might say the pillaring is a little bit faster, but I really like them both. And as far as the coral blocks go, I actually don't have too many of those, so I'm going to fly over to the conduit right here. And there you are, buddy, and we can start to take out some of these. I know I just said I feel bad taking out more coral reefs, but this is actually still an extension of the other coral reef that I started taking out, so why not just finish the job? Little bit of mini corals here while we're at it, but I need some pink coral, we need the magenta coral, we got the yellow, blue, and red all the way over here. We need basically everything. Coral reef, I am really sorry, I don't want to destroy it, but we are going to rebuild you. These made like a happier and less squishy noise when I was breaking them. We have so much coral rising above us now. Scoop up everything we possibly can. Got this shulker box getting nice and filled up. Pick up all the straggler blocks here. This should be enough for now. Let's head back to the ancient city and see exactly what we got to work with. Back at what feels like our new home. We've been spending so much time here. Let's, uh, you know what? We could start back in this corner. Let's just lay some of the shulker box right here. Take out all of the colors that we got to work with. And, you know, let's start with the blue right here and just kind of start randomizing it. I love building coral reefs because you can just kind of build them however you want. It's like in real life, I love building aquariums in real life. I don't know if anybody else is like that, but aquariums have always been something that I've been extra fascinated with. And kind of wrapping around the side, the magenta creeping right through the middle here. Maybe some coming off the glass up here too would be pretty cool. 
This part's probably going to be the most fun because we can just be as random as we want with all of these designs. And we can just place all these corals wherever we want, too. I like the way this pink is just grabbing onto the amethyst structure over here. It's working its way over on top of the conduit as well. Kind of happened by accident, but we have little archways going over here with one of every color right now. I think we need to go back and beef up this blue a little bit. We'll have this coral wrap around this structure. This part right here is, for the most part, just in a straight line. I tried my best not to do that, but sometimes it ends up just happening. It's gonna be fun having this blue start to grab onto both of the amethyst structures. Start to wrap around the inside. Want the archway to feel just a little bit more cozy, so we'll have these just weep down a bit. This blue structure over here is pretty much done as well in this corner, and the pillars are pretty much all exposed now. I don't think there's any more deep slate to get, and this is pretty much as high as the ceiling is gonna go. I have some glowstone in the corners to make them pop a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to have glowstone in between all of the pillars. I was thinking about doing some diorite walls. But for now, I kind of want to try to finish this yellow. It wraps around all the way over to these towers. Yeah, and right here, it just gets a little skinny, so I want to beef up a little bit more. Start to work the yellow back here just a little bit into this hallway. We actually have nothing back behind this amethyst structure. We could use some of the bubble coral block. We actually don't have it until that back corner over there. So yeah, let's just use the bubble coral block back here. And away we go. All the way back down over here. Go up a little bit again, and then we will go right back down. Maybe we'll slap a little bit more yellow up over here and get it all up on the wall. This whole place is now coral reefed up. We finally have everything done. I have four little red blocks left. Let's get one right here, one over here, and let's get one right here and here. This is definitely the biggest aquarium that I have ever made in Minecraft. This is awesome. I definitely need to get more decorative coral blocks in here, though. Wait, but uh, let's first, let's see... Uh, do we have any more coral blocks in this blue shulker box? We do not. We're good to go. Let's get uh, all the fan blocks going first. One of every color. Let's go. Let's start spamming. This place is getting reefed up. I have a full shulker box of all of these blocks, and I still think I'm not going to have enough. I might have to go back to the warm ocean and get the farm going. Ooh, we got to make this tunnel right here start to look a little bit nicer, too. Something we're probably also going to need to start to make this look a little bit better are some sea pickles. I actually brought some down, but which shulker box are they? There we go. I believe eight stacks will do with groups of four here. I think that's 128 separate light sources. Smack you right there. We'll get you smacked up right here. We'll even swim up here, get you smacked up, and we'll slap you down right here. One thing I definitely need more of are the amethyst clusters. We're going to have to make our way back to the amethyst farm as well. We just need pretty much everything. I'm going to start placing some more sea pickles at the very top. It's kind of nice when they're lit up in the distance. I get the floor and the towers themselves. Got to get some coral up on here. Swimming around looking for a couple spots where the colors could contrast. Like we could put the red on the pink and the yellow. Get the yellow over here on some of the blue parts. Some of the blue parts over here on the pink coral. I think actually all of the spiked coral looks pretty good. Even when it's red on red or we go over here and we got yellow on yellow. It looks pretty nice. Now we can swim around and start spamming some of these amethyst clusters. These are always going to make the coral reef look just a little bit nicer. Plus, the sound of placing these down ain't too bad. Got some waterlogged amethyst. And I also forgot we have all of this waterlogged diorite on the walls. We need to come up here and just start to fill these up. There we go. That is looking a lot nicer. I guess back here, since it used to be a cave, none of these are source blocks except for up high. Gotta take these out one by one. And by the way, if you guys are wondering why the resource pack is off, I actually switched to 1.20.4, and actually, Fancy 2.0 is not working with it. It's actually not compatible. But we'll find a workaround for it. For now, we're gonna have to go back to the regular hearts and meat sticks there instead of the, uh, the carrots and the skulls. Along the glowstone, we're gonna get some kelp going up here so it doesn't blind us. And if we turn around, we're gonna get some kelp growing on top of all the coral and on this amethyst structure right here. Now it's time to spam the bone meal. Let's go. Time to make this place nice and grassy. Since there's no green coral blocks, the green grass on all of these just makes them all pop. Just gonna have to keep swimming around, spamming everywhere. Bone meal in near the top over here. We got the top of the towers looking nice and lush, overgrown. And actually up here we do have a little bit of ravine, I just noticed. We could actually cover this up. Grab all these magma blocks from the shulker box. Let's swim right back up. Starting in the corner, this is already looking great. Finish the last couple up here, and wow, we got a mini ravine just completely covered up. Orange strip making the ceiling pop. I think over here, yeah, there's just a little bit of glass that still needed to be placed. I don't know why I forgot to put this here. And of course, we uh, are misplacing blocks. Can't go a single episode without misplacing some blocks. 
This place already feels like it's so full of life, but actually there's no fish in here whatsoever yet, so we gotta go get some fish. We have about five stacks of buckets right here, so uh, we should be able to get a bunch of them. This guy's fully grown now, by the way. I had no idea that baby hoglins turned into regular hoglins. I thought they stayed baby hoglins forever. Still learning something every single day. All right, let's load up on a bunch of water buckets here, and uh, let's catch as much fish as we possibly can. From what I read, there's 2,700 tropical fish types in this game. I don't know if we're going to collect them all, but uh, we'll start right here. Gotcha, buddy, and gotcha, buddy. These are three dotty backs. Got some more guys right over here. What's up, dudes? We got you. These are nice and colorful. What? Uh, these are chichlids. Ooh, these are nice. What do we got here? These are red-lipped blennies. I love fish names. Some of these are funny. Absolutely zero puffer fish are allowed in the sanctuary. But we'll grab a couple more of these guys right here. What do we got? Goat fish. All right, I'll take some. We should actually get some cod down there too. These guys are pretty cool. What are these? Blue tangs, actually. Though I'm gonna grab more of these. Back at the giant glass wall, it actually looks way more interesting now that we have the magma blocks up there and all of the coral up against the glass. But we have a bunch of barrels with a bunch of different types of fish uh, designated for them, and we have a bunch of cod here. We have the Moorish idols. We have the trigger fish, queen angel fish over here, and the ornate butterfly fish, as well as a bunch of other ones. But you know what? Let's start getting in here. Let's get the cod in there first. Welcome home, everybody. You can go here, you can go here. Boom, and bam, and bam. Hopefully they all make themselves right at home. I have a lot of random fish that I found, like the cob and the glitter here. Also the tomato clownfish, but let's start putting them all in here. These fish right here are actually beautiful. I'm glad I found these two. I don't know how rare a lot of these fish are, but I'm glad we got them. I've never unleashed this many fish in an aquarium. This is crazy. Last few fish to place here. Not too bad. Okay, ooh, looks like the fish are actually taken home everywhere. We have fish all the way in the back left. We have fish over here all the way in the back right. It's cool how groups of fish will meet together. Some of them are the same, and some of them are completely different colors. Okay, now there is a bunch of life in this aquarium. This is awesome. Everywhere you turn, we have a bunch of fish everywhere. No puffer fish, though. They are not allowed. I actually just remembered these deep slate ears back here. I'm gonna actually replace them with some diorite walls. This should work. I actually hope it looks good. We have them right here with me right now, and that's not too bad. We, there's no purple walls, so these diorite walls are gonna have to do. Well, guys, I think we successfully turned this into an aquarium. We brought an immense amount of coral blocks back, all of the decorative coral blocks with us too. I don't know how many fish we have, but I think there's about 200 to 300 fish now. This place is absolutely enormous. This group of fish right here in particular, the one right up on the ceiling, these guys are really colorful. And this is gonna be an awesome place to hang out. I'm probably just gonna leave the conduit down here. I'm not gonna take it with me so I can actually just come back here anytime. Got this nice walkway here. This is, ah, oh, it just feels so good to be in here now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. You guys rock. Okay, everybody needs to take a seat. Everybody just stop flying in the air, please, for just a moment. And you take a seat, you take a seat, you take, everybody just take a seat. This guy right here is not a parrot. Hi everyone, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today, as you can see, we are starting off in the giant ancient city aquarium that we had built. This thing is absolutely massive, and we have about 300 fish in here, and we're still moving some more in on the live streams. Let me tell you, I am very much ready to get back to building some houses. We've been randomizing this aquarium for about a week now, and I kind of just want to start building some actual structures. Building this thing was very fun. I'm sure the fish are loving it here too, but, uh, you know, I think building houses is my favorite. One thing that does matter is that the fish love it here. They are swimming around absolutely everywhere in this new home. I'm sure you could guess from the title of the episode, we are building a parrot sanctuary today, and uh, I'm actually kind of happy about that because we've been underground for so long. Believe me, this was very fun, but uh, I think it's time we head out. We do have a couple things, though, to take care of before we start building that sanctuary. We've transformed the nightclub back here. We have the ancient city portal that's completely redone. And the ancient city village right over here is basically complete, except I realized they don't really have a way to tell time, and there's no clocks down here. So I was trying to think of a good spot for these guys to be able to tell some time, and I think right in the center of town, just on an inconspicuous barrel right here, there goes the clock. Thank you guys for being yourselves. I appreciate you. I hope you enjoy the new way to tell some time. We have been down here for about a month and a half building. We have this giant train station over here. We have three beacons down, actually. I think I'm going to have to take two of them. One is over here by the ancient city portal, and I believe we have one over here by the nightclub as well. It's about time we say farewell. Thank you so much, dude. You did a great job, but uh, we're going to have to move you back upstairs. I feel like while we're over here picking up these iron blocks, we should go say what's up in the nightclub. 
quick left turn right here and what's going on guys how you doing hope you're having a great time disco cat still up here holding down the fort and yes he is what's up disco cat i'm never gonna get tired of going in this place and how did this guy get up here actually it really is kind of difficult for him to get all the way over here he must have climbed a ladder or he i don't even know he would have had to crawl all the way along these brick stairs from this fortress it's actually kind of wild. He's all the way over there. He crawled over these campfires, made his way along these brick stairs, and we actually have this guy right here too. What are you doing, dude? Before I forget, I'm actually going to go take out that other beacon. You also did a great job, my friend. Thank you very much for being yourself, but it is time to go back upstairs. Take the glass pane. Give me all these iron blocks. One thing left to do now in this ancient city, now that we have it completely full of life and ready to go, it can kind of just live on its own. But that one thing left to do is to take all of these materials back home. We have one, two, three, nine shulker boxes downstairs. And if we go up here, we have six right here in the back and we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven upstairs. Not to mention all of these barrels that are up in the ceiling, completely filled with deep slate over here, and in the walls filled with all the deep slate. Also, a couple random chests. I don't really remember why we filled them up down here, but we have those too. Lewis and Frank have been watching me slowly fill all these up. A couple shulker box filled with the leftover loot from the remaining chests that we didn't get next to some of the shriekers that were left over. We have a bunch of leftover moss and azalea blocks for decoration later if we want to use them. And if we go down our secret little hallway back here, we have a bunch of skulk to take back home. Safe to say we have a lot of materials and most of this is probably going to go to the auto sorting system. Since we spent over a month down here, we have so many random items to take back. This is going to take a while. You know what? Let's just start taking them all down. Our ender chest is full, and now our inventory is completely full. We have way too many shulker boxes. It's, it's time to go home real fast, and there goes a wasted rocket. All the way back up here. I don't know when the next time I'm going to see these chickens, so I'll, I'll say goodbye to you guys for now. Actually, you know what? It wouldn't be a proper farewell if we didn't do this. Heading back to the nether hub, and we have a brand new friend right here. If you guys can remember from the last episode, I allowed you guys to name him. And in that last video, my absolute favorite name in the comment section that you guys left was Link. Link is going to stay here for as long as he can. I hope he doesn't hurt us too much. I'll try to give him a hug. Thank you. Ouch. Oh, let's go home. We got to put all this stuff away. There's actually a couple things that we have to take care of as well back home. For some reason, we have a lot of mobs that just like to get stuck. And of course it's raining. It is always raining. Fly in real quick. What's up, dude? It is good to see you guys. This guy over here looks a little confused. Are you okay, buddy? Honestly, this is just the type of energy I was looking for this episode. Let's go. We have a lot of shulker boxes. Let's start placing them down and getting in everybody's way. And this isn't even everything from the barrels that are in the ceiling and the walls. And Santa, actually, get back on that cake. Thank you very much. And like I mentioned before, we put any of this stuff away. There's a couple things to put back into place. A couple of mobs just keep getting stuck. For starters, all the way over here by the dripstone farm and the bee sphere, we have a cow tree. I'm not really sure how many cows are in here. I'm not sure how this cow tree was formed, but I do love this cow tree. You know what, on second thought, I was going to take this out, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. It's not every day you have a cow tree in your world. And you know what, actually, you guys get to stay. Let's go take out the other guys, though. We've done this once or twice already, and I didn't want to have to do it again, but we have so many villagers right here. Why? Why are there 20 to 30 villagers in here? And a cow? What are you doing in here, cow? Right here, these guys are probably causing just a little bit of lag, so I think one by one, we just have to bam. Sorry, bam. Sorry, dude. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, everybody. I'm probably going to have to watch out for some iron golems after this because they're going to be hunting me down, possibly. But we really got to make sure these guys also can't get in here anymore. Because these guys get stuck and then all of a sudden the villager breeder is making more and more villagers and then all of a sudden we have hundreds of villagers back here. I usually try to be nice to the villagers too, but when they're all stuck in a well... And stop looking at me, dude. I'm sorry. We have the last two guys right here. Sorry, dudes. And other than changing the design of the well, I really don't know another solution right now that maybe just putting some glass panes down. We'll just put one right here, there, and there. Walk around to the other side and put one, two, and three. If the villagers somehow get in here now, I, d I really don't know how they're doing that. We had a new build that I wanted to show you guys, and that is the new Sweet Berry Farm under the Fox Sanctuary right here. But uh, I actually ran into another sanctuary where there's an issue of all these sniffers getting snuck in the corner. These guys are always getting stuck right here, so I'm actually just going to preemptively put some chiseled stone blocks right here. Thank you very much, sir, for getting out of the way. Actually, this iron golem is now in the way again. Okay, everybody is in the way. Everybody is stuck in this corner right now, and I can't place this block. Okay, maybe it's this iron golem that's being a bad influence. You gotta go, sir. It might be just this guy and this guy alone that's not allowing me to place that chiseled block. Please move. 
Okay, let's get in here. Let's try this one more time. And there we go. Put a cherry leaf right here and right there. And we are now good to go. That is perfect. Guys, you shouldn't have to be stuck in this corner anymore. And we released them. Okay, yeah, they definitely were stuck right here. Let's get you out. All right, buddy, I'm pushing you back in. Get in there. Thank you. Okay, and they are unstuck. That was much more of a task than I thought it was going to be. Makes it all that much more fulfilling to come over here and show you guys the brand new sweet berry farm that's down here under the fox sanctuary. So I don't know if you guys remember, a while back we had made this fox sanctuary and named it after a bunch of the Twitch chatters. And actually, if you go down here, we have a brand new lower section so that they can actually take out all the sweet berries they want. Arctic foxes definitely still need their own home, but uh, this is the most efficient sweet berry farm that I've ever had. Fox Sanctuary Farm definitely got a lot louder. These guys are sprinting back and forth just everywhere. But if we go around the front side, are you going to make a beeline for this door if I open it? Please stay still, sir. Do not do anything. Thank you. You can walk around the front, take a quick left turn, go right down the stairs. You are now underground, and you have a brand new sweet berry storage. I just set this up, and that's a lot more sweet berries than I thought would be down here, but something I'm seeing is no minecart in here. Gonna have to break this dirt block and head in. What do we got going on? This guy is stuck. Why is the minecart getting stuck? That's kind of strange. I guess let's just give it a little push right there and get on our way. Head out before it hits us right here. We'll put you back and we have the peony. Put you back and the farm is back up and running. Should be collecting more sweet berries. There we go. It is rising. Let's get out of here. Thank you guys for watching those YouTube streams, by the way. It really does mean a lot having you guys show up. Now we can do something extra important and go right over to our goal board in front of the starter house and wipe off that sweet berry sign that has been here for ages. Where is it at? Right here. There you go. Got a little too excited and took the oak plank with me. And now that I'm here, I'm remembering that uh, from the 8,000 days video, we saw this giant dirt and glass tower that pretty much needs to go. It's a little bit of an eyesore. We went all the way up here to get the Star Trader advancement, and it looks like my guy down here has just fallen a little bit. The puppy up here is doing just fine, but uh, this guy down here, what are you going to do? I thought it might be a little silly to take the dirt column out while this guy's still in here, so let's just try this out. He's going to hang out, and he is just going to be... Oh, I'm sorry, dude. See you later. Well, that's one way of telling somebody to get down. I think what we're going to have to do is actually just take out the soul sand block from all the way down here and take out, oops, take out the sand then and uh, replace this water with some sand. Pick some up from the starter house. Then we just sit up here and spam some sand with our new puppy. Almost got the water gone and we are good. Now we can actually just take this sand and the dirt all the way back down, right it to the ground level. This was a really fun advancement to get, but uh, unfortunately we made it right in front of our starter house, so I have to look at it every single day. It's easy enough to take all the way back down, though. Four hours later, we have finally reached the bottom. Just put all this dirt, all this sand away, as well as everything downstairs in the shulker boxes. We should probably get to unloading this. It's going to take a while. But it's nothing a live Twitch stream can't handle, and thank you guys for watching. By the way, it is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. We do stream every single day. As you can see, we finally have everything emptied here. We have so many shulker boxes empty. I need to put all of these back in the shulker box hall, or we could use some of them to continue going back and gathering some of that deep slate down in the ancient city. We have some music discs we need to take down to the disco anyways. Also, this shulker box right here, this is filled with some of the ores that we hadn't taken up yet. Maybe we should just take them down right now. This is a lot of diamonds. We have a lot of redstone, a lot of coal, and we also have a lot of iron, so it's gonna take a little bit to tower up here. Never thought I'd have enough diamonds to stack up this high. Wow, we can still barely see the hot air balloon, and I'm actually thinking what we should do is tower these up, and uh, as a celebration at the end of the episode for getting the build done, we should just take all these down and see how much ore we have. I have popped a totem flying down too hard right here before, so I am going to just go as gently as I possibly can. It's going to be so fun taking out this tower. We're going to get so many resources. And with all of that being out, we have a bunch of empty shulker boxes that we should probably take out right now because we're going to use it to grab all of that deep slate. Actually, while we're here in the ender chest, I want to show you, we do have a lot of tropical fish that we should probably take back as well. Flying back over to the ancient city one last time. It's going to feel nice to come down here, drop off all these fish at the aquarium, grab the deep slate, and then really never have a reason to come back here except for to come and check up on the villagers and take a gander at all of the stuff that we built. I realized that uh, we never actually put salmon in here, so these three big salmon, uh, these are going to be the first of its kind. And of course, a bunch of random tropical fish that we've picked up from the Wandering Trader. Wandering Trader is a good place to grab a bunch of fish that you might never get a hold of. But let's drop all of these guys off real fast. Get a salmon here, get a salmon there. We're going to get a salmon everywhere. Yeah, as time goes on, we're just going to keep on adding more and more of these. 
get all of these buckets put away and grab all of these shulker box one more time time to get that deep slate time to take everything that we've taken from here and bring it back home finally taking all these back is going to be a challenge because i actually did forget we have so many barrels down here too from when we first actually started excavating everything i forgot i put a bunch of materials down here i don't think we're running out of deep slate and tough for a very long time I do have a cool new spot that I want to show everybody. Uh, this is going to be the new place where I'm getting all of the materials sorted. As you guys know, we have our auto sorting system right here where we can drop all of our materials off. We have the gravel. Let's just get that in right now. Head down to the first rail system here and we'll hop on the minecart. This actually used to bring us all the way over to the auto sorting system. And now, for the time being, it actually brings us over to this underground giant mess hall. And I'm going to hop off the minecart probably right now. That can get sent and I'm just going to show you guys this thing is absolutely enormous did this all on a youtube stream and thank you for watching if you did but uh, now we have the second tunnel that's going to bring us all the way over to the new location that i have shown you guys but now this tunnel is a little bit more cleared and we've completely torched up this place and got the beacon in the spot where it needs to be so that we can start excavating this a little bit more i am very excited this actually goes all the way up through rainbow mountain and now we can finally have the auto sorting system a little bit further away from our starting home base this project is for another day though we actually have a couple other things that we need to focus on for now i am going to drop off most of these shulker boxes right here though until we get this hallway completed it's always fun having a bunch of side projects to work on by the way i know i mention it all the time but if you are interested in checking out those side projects and seeing the progress on them feel free to stop by the streams anytime now it's time to start focusing on these parrots and i actually only have two of them right now and we got them all the way back in episodes one and two and if you go in here they're still in the panda sanctuary we got this little guy right over here and we also got this guy right here let's get this fern out of the way we need to get these parrots to uh, just somewhere a little bit uh, nicer let's get you sir right here and they're both on my shoulders this is perfect there are a few spots that i have in mind that i'd like to get these guys i think we're gonna go over towards the pumpkin patch crazy how these guys will just stay on your shoulder for a mile long journey it's nice to see the villagers making their way over towards the pumpkin patch i like this place to be a little bit more lively and these villagers are doing exactly what they need to be doing one day i was walking over in this area and i noticed that uh, i mean over here is very lively we have all of the pumpkins these giant pumpkins for this patch over here and then to the right is this giant field that we've built absolutely nothing in and i think right now is the the time to build a giant hanging gardens area for these parrots I'm gonna sit you guys down here, and uh, you know what? Your home is about to get built. Look at this guy dance. This guy's got the moves. I'm gonna push you over here just a little bit so I know exactly where you're at when I'm building this thing, and I have a shulker box ready to go. I think I'm gonna use a bunch of quartz pillars and blocks of quartz, and I have a bunch of emeralds for when I inevitably run out of quartz. First things first, we do need to clear this space. We have some jungle trees. We have some cherry trees right here. Let's get all this taken out. We actually probably are running a little bit low on cherry wood anyway, so this is nice. Well, the field seems to be cleared out, but now that I'm actually over by Rainbow Mountain, this light blue area right here, I'm not really sure what I was thinking. As well as this cyan, we could probably bring this back towards the mountain a little bit. We need less talking and more doing. Thank you again to Efficiency 5. We appreciate you. Uh-oh, we're revealing all of that desert sand right here. So actually, we're probably going to get all of this replaced with some grass. Goodbye, sand. And then it's time to bring in all the grass. Okay, not bad. We have a giant grassy field over here, and just in case, I actually don't have any lightning rods over here, so we planted one right next to the beach. If lightning ever hits this rainbow mountain, that would just be devastating. First things first, I'm going to square out this area. I'm going to see how large of a square I can actually put here. Just going to bing, bang, boom, and bop our way to the middle. And we do have a decent sized square. It's going to probably end up being a little bit bigger, so uh, I think first things first, let's just build straight up. We're going to separate each of these floors by five blocks. That way we can make the distance between all these floors equal. Other than Rainbow Mountain, this is already kind of the tallest structure over here. Still can't wait for the day till we get something in this lake over here too. We're going to start making this top platform up here, except we're not going to connect the corners. Because we're actually going to use the quartz pillars instead. We'll actually go right here and move right up. Jump down right over here, replicate this on all four sides. Then we're going to get up to the top here, and on this next layer, we just need to bring this out for probably about three more blocks. We'll connect these quartz up to this pillar right here. We're going to make a platform right here. Eventually, we're going to break some of these in the middle, because we'll maybe just do a spiraling staircase. From the corner, we're going out one, two, and three. We'll drop down in the corner right here and pillar up again. And I believe we'll continue this all the way down. 
Looks like I'm already out of quartz. Let's, uh, hold on. Do I have any more down here? I don't. Nope. Let's, uh, let's take the shulker box. Let's go get more quartz. And before you know it, we have arrived. Let's grab a couple of these. Thank you very much, sir. I'll take these quartz blocks. Honestly, we've been coming back for quartz so often. I might double up the Mason Trading Hall. We have 12 of them here right now, and I might just get another 12. That's going to have to be for another day, though. That's going to be about a three, four hour project. And now we can return to our quartz tower with a lot more quartz, hopefully enough to finish this project. Got the last couple on this layer. Now we can drop down. Here we go. Going out three more blocks. Let's go diagonal one, two, and three. Kind of glad we're using quartz because if we happen to mess up anything here, we can just easily take it down. I really do love being able to instamine everything. Eventually, this thing starts to take a pretty nice shape, sort of pyramidal. We are recording this during Christmas, so we have a couple of chests to lay out here. We have this little guy right here and the double chest that turns into a green one. Happy holiday season to everybody, though. I do appreciate y'all. Started etching some designs in the top. I'm probably going to keep going through here and etching some more designs. I want to keep some space open around these pillars. But I think it'd be a good idea to come around and actually replace a lot of these missing blocks now with some moss. Nom 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 nom. Also, this middle beam right here, I'm actually just going to remove all of the quartz, and we're going to keep on replacing it with the glowstone. We actually started using quartz for the stairs around the middle pillar, so I think glowstone is going to be a nice, different color. Also, it provides a nice, beaming source of light all the way to the bottom. We'll get some paths hooked up here, and we'll get more parrots. We actually did find another parrot recently on stream, and uh, we're going to have to go find some more. But first, next step is to replace all of the missing quartz with some moss. Start on the top floor here. We'll get some flowers in and the glow berries in in just a moment. Actually, wait, that blocked off the stairs. But we'll get the foliage in in just a moment. I want to make sure this moss looks good up here. Not too bad at all. That actually really makes it pop. And if we look at it from up above, that's pretty cool. Let's get these layers done. I tried to make all of these as symmetrical as possible. I really hope we didn't mess up anywhere. The sun reflecting on this quartz right now is absolutely beautiful. The moss in here is just a, such a nice touch. Actually, the sun is going down real quick. We could focus on these bottom lights so stuff stops spawning down here. We don't want any creeper issues. Let's fly to the nether tree farm real fast. I'm thinking some of these warped fences over here might do. Unfortunately, there's no green wood type yet, but with the mangrove and the cherry woods being added recently, uh, you know, that might happen soon. Let's grab some quartz stairs real quick, and we're going to light up the bottom. I think what we'll do is place some stairs like so, and we'll get the diorite below with the warped fence and the chain action and the end rod right below that. Some of you guys could have probably seen this coming from a mile away. Let's get this repeated on every side. On the corners and along the back side of these pillars here, I did want to start placing some of these glow berries. We'll start lighting them up with some bone meal as well to give this inside here a little bit more light. Right now we're working with some end rods, some glow berries, and some glowstone. Hope you guys are enjoying the moss patterns up here as well. I tried to make it look as intricate as possible. Do we have a wandering trader? We do, and I have emeralds on me. Thank you for that. Thank you for this, and thank you for this, and I'll take the cactus. You know what? I'll take the pack dice, and just give me the jungle saplings. Thanks, dude, and thank you, llama. Also, thank you. Ow! Thank you, llama. Appreciate you. Anyways, we'll put this stuff back real quick. Finish putting the stairs up in here for some structural integrity. One glow berry right here, and I think we'll get one in the corner right here, and that should light up pretty much the rest of the floor. We can get the torches out. I also thought it might be kind of cool to put hedges around the spiral staircase here, but I'm thinking I'm going to beef it up just a little bit more and maybe just turn this into a complete wall. Leave a one by 2 space here so we can walk in. Actually, we'll completely block this one off. Get this side completely covered over here. Okay, actually, each side can have its own little 2 by one door. So you can get in from right here, you can get in from over there, right here, and you can even drop in from this back side. I'm actually going to do that on every level. Let's take out the glow berries that I thought was going to be a good idea right there, and we'll replace it with some hedges. This is actually looking much better. Of course it's raining right now. Actually, you know, while we're on the second floor, and even the third floor up here, you can take a look at the intricacy. I tried to make sure that none of the pillars are being touched by the moss. On the top level now, we can finally get these last little hedges in. I'm going to leave a door right there, and we are good to go. Man, I really do like the look of the azalea bush. I think what I'm going to do is just go around the edge with these. You know what? Let's get down here and make the rain stop real quick. And with these azalea leaves, we can create a sort of hedge effect. I want to try to get a little more color and detail in here. Let's use some iron trap doors right there, and up here against the leaves, we're going to put some spruce trap doors. That way, we can hang a couple more glow berries on the outside. I'm thinking these parrots are going to love this place. We're going to hang more glow berries. And I think before we start getting the foliage in, like all the flowers and everything like that, we should probably go get all the types of parrots. 
I believe there's five unique parrot types in this game, so we gotta head back to the jungle to try to find more. We have the red parrot, we have the blue, green, and yellow parrot, and also just the green parrot over here, so we have two more. Light these up real quick, and then uh, we'll let's just let them grow down to the ground, and let's go, uh, let's go get some parrots. The parrots that we've already acquired have come from this jungle over here next to Rainbow Mountain, and, uh, I mean, it'd be a miracle if we were to find another one. I searched far and wide and was only able to find the first three, so we actually might have to go to a different jungle. And I think the next closest one might be next to the Swamp Tadpole Sanctuary. Take a little nether trip, hop out into the swamp. We have a bunch of the frogs still in here. What's up, guys? How you doing? These guys are going to remain until we actually just need more for the frog light farm. But for now, we're going to go all the way over to this jungle. Now, here is a giant jungle. We are bound to find at least a couple of parrots out here. In fact, if I fly all the way down here, I believe we found another blue, green, and yellow one. This guy right here took almost about 20 seeds. Through the vines, I was seeing a gray parrot. How many seeds are you going to take up here, buddy? He's taking a lot. These guys took a lot of seeds. I wonder how many parrots we can actually take back at a time. This guy right here is not a parrot. Seems like these parrots do teleport to you a little bit, but uh, if we were to use the elytra, they don't really travel to you as far. I'm going to refrain from going too fast so I can take these guys back to the nether portal with me. Well, we have both birds on us right now. What happens if we just walk backwards into the nether portal? I really hope they make it with us. Okay, and oh, they're still here. Let's go. Now we can just keep running. These parrots are going to teleport behind us the whole way. Looks like we have two more birds down here. Be my friend. Thank you, sir. And over here, sir, you need to be my friend. Thank you. Wait, hold on. Yep, thank you very much. Picking up two bluebirds right here, and sometimes it's actually easier to turn the hitboxes on when you're running through the jungle. These birds are very hard to find. Unless you're a master bird collector, and all of a sudden you just have 20 birds. And take a seat, buddy. Alright, we have, I don't even know how many. Let's count all these guys when we take them back. We have a long boat right ahead of us. Oh my god, these guys are everywhere. This is insane. Let's pick this last guy up. I'm going to jump down into the boat right here. Hopefully none of these guys can get in. I am just going to boat over and uh, kind of just stay next to the land so these guys have a place to spawn over. Are they going to be able to make it all the way over to this land here? Yes! Okay, there's all the birds. Yeah! I'm really hoping none of them are stranded in the water out there. Have you guys ever seen this many parrots in the desert? Looks like we are closer to home than ever. Here is Rainbow Mountain in all its glory. I also really love that we have a building out here now. This coral farm out here is just looking nice out in the middle of nowhere. Looks like we can just take a quick leap. There we go. We got a lot of steps to climb. We have so many parrots traveling with us right now. I love this valley, by the way. I cannot wait to get something built right here on this desert plain. Flying in with about 20 more parrots. Here we go. Let's meet up with the, I believe, 10 of them that we already have. Okay, everybody needs to take a seat. Everybody just stop flying in the air, please, for just a moment. And uh, you take a seat, you take a seat, you take... Everybody just take a seat. Oh my god, this iron golem is beat up right now. You know what? Let's, let's just get him some iron. This guy's been keeping us safe. The least we can do is get him back to health. We have so many parrots on the ground here. Actually, there's a couple more that are chilling in the nether. I'm gonna bring them back. We have you, and we have you. How about you hop on my shoulder? Get on my shoulder there, guy. Let's get through the gate, and let's hop back in. All right, easy as pie. There should be still on my shoulder. Never mind, we went down the stairs. They're not on my shoulder anymore, but I'm going to get on the boat. And uh, hopefully these guys just follow me this way. Right over to this land bridge, and we do have the parrots. Thank you for following me, buddy. I appreciate that. Open this fence gate. Close that fence gate. Let's keep these guys on our shoulders. Step aside. I have some parrots on me. Last buddy, take a seat. And wait, wait, hold up. And you right there, take a seat. Oh. This last guy has just been floating in the air. Get down on the ground, sir. Please take a seat. Come on. Let's sit. What are you doing here? Thank you for sitting. I think we we might have enough parrots. I'm, I'm not sure, though. One thing I am sure about, though, is that this place needs some foliage. Let's start off with the torch flowers, pitcher plants, and sunflowers, peonies, lilacs, and rose bushes. All of the tall flowers, plus the torch flowers are, like, honestly, these are the best looking flowers in the game. So, I pretty much consider them a double flower. They hold pretty much just as much value to me, and I really like them. I hear some people that don't like the torch flowers, but I, I don't understand that. They're so beautiful. Now, I was thinking if we could drop some water from right here, that would be nice, but uh, we would actually need somewhere for the water to fall so it could fall from the top section maybe drop through this right here go over to this moss block this moss block maybe even go over once more we'll drop down and we'll take out this block and we can take out this block 
And if my calculations are correct, this water bucket should end up all the way on the floor. I guess let's just do this, and uh, I guess we'll follow it all the way to the bottom. If we did it right, then we should get a nice surprise, and the water will be right here. So that's perfect. What I'm going to do is make an intricate little waterway. Same thing as the moss upstairs. Nothing is going to be touching the pillar blocks. And to spice it up a little bit, we could use some glowstone down here. Oh, that's going to be nice. Got all the waterways made. I feel like we just need to get some more rose bushes in and out. Get some rose bushes on the outside of the structure, too. The outside of the structure always needs a little bit of love. Somehow this little bird got pushed away from all the other birds. And we got to start moving these guys all the way up. And you know what? I'm actually just going to start taking these guys up with me. Couple groups at a time. Let's just start out heading to the top. While we're at the top, I wanted to get four end rods up here for a small lamp. This bird needs to get out of the way. And somehow the wandering trader made it all the way up to the top level here. How did you do that, sir? Add some pink color to the top. We're going to get some cherry saplings up in here. As well as these bottom level. Yeah, right here. We have a bunch of flower pots, but no cherry saplings. And also, while we have these cherry saplings out, we could get some of them kind of growing over by the edge of Rainbow Mountain over here. Couple of cherry saplings over here never hurt nobody. It's a nice way to fill in these little back areas until we get a small structure back there. And actually, I'm just noticing right now, this sugar cane right here, it's it's floating. There's no water around here. Why is there sugar cane? This makes absolute zero sense, and I'm not going to take it out. It's going to stay here. Get the pink petals everywhere. These always look nice. Then we're going to run, jump around, bone meal everything that we possibly can, except for this creeper grass that you can get out of here. Bone meal the glowstone down here as well. Bone meal the outside so it starts to look a little bit more overgrown back here, especially up against the Rainbow Mountain. This is looking way nicer already. And you know what? Let's get a cherry tree going. Get you going right here too. No! What's it? No, the parrot! Um, I don't know what happened. You guys didn't hear anything. Let's uh, let's go back up to the top. No more horsing around. I'm actually just going to travel all the way up with this water column. And there we go. And I'm actually going to get a little bit of sea pickle action right here. Figured this would brighten up the top just a little bit. And let's get some of these parrots down. We got you three right here. Let's just get you to sit, da sit down right there. The wandering trader keeps pushing around all the parrots, so I'm gonna buy what I can from- Dude, get back here. I'm gonna buy what I can from you. Give me these small drip leaves, and you know what? I really don't need anything else. I'm gonna- you, to Get out of here. Get out of here, sir. Thank you for your business. Okay, now we can set these infinite parrots down. You can get down- Wait, get down here, sir. Just take a seat. Thank you. Got this guy right here, and looks like one little guy right here might be the last one. Set you down right here and set you down right there. Oh, that is perfect. Thinking a couple of tulips on this level right here never hurt nobody. Even a bee has made his way all the way up in here. That's awesome. The parrot sanctuary is officially done. We will continue adding all the parrots in here. Right now we have 37 parrots and uh, I think 37 more we could do. Taking a step back real quick though so I can look at this build. Wow, this is a huge hanging gardens. I love this. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's just so nice to finally have this space filled in and it's so nice and lush. We went from a completely flat, desolate land to a nice quartz build. Thanks again to all the YouTube members, Twitch subscribers, and Patreon supporters. It really does mean a lot and thanks for the support. Taking a look over here from Rainbow Mountain as well and oh yeah, this build is fitting in just right. How are y'all still stuck right here? That is insane. Uh, let's go right here. Okay, nope, that was an accident. Let's uh, go right here. Okay, nope, that was an accident. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here and welcome back to episode 59 of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today we are building an arctic fox igloo. It's going to be a huge igloo out in the middle of the ocean, but uh, for right now I've actually just been taking out a lot of these iron golems. All of these guys gotta go. There's like 20 of them around town. We've been taking them all out, and then more of them just keep popping up. We definitely need to be careful, but uh, these guys, they need to be more careful. There was a hidden one back here too. I thought there was only two back there, but there's three. We don't even really need that iron. We have three extra iron farms now. But before we build anything, I actually did say last episode after we built the Parrot Sanctuary that we would take down all of these ores just to see how much we got from the ancient city, and then we did not do that. So, first things first, we're getting that done right now. Let's land over here, okay, and down we go. We might actually be able to make a diamond beacon after this. We'll have unlimited redstone too, here's the gold. We actually just made an automatic snow farm, we have a bunch more redstone projects coming up as well. I don't think I'm going to be at sea level for another 10 minutes. I'm starting to run out of room for all of these in my inventory. 
I also didn't realize how much XP this was going to bring us to. And what do you know? It looks like we reached the iron. And it seems the lapis has arrived now. The coal would have pillared up as one of the higher towers, but we actually fortuned a lot of it out in the ancient city. Okay, I started this just a couple minutes after the day started, and the moon is already coming up, sun is setting, this is taking forever. Finally at the bottom, and it looks like we actually have a little bit of cleaning up to do. Slap everything into some shulker boxes here. And after condensing and sorting, we have a lot of materials. We have so much redstone, so much lapis now. 53 blocks of diamonds is not that bad either. Get all these guys back into their respective bins. The morning sun's coming up. It's actually a perfect time to go show you guys the parrot sanctuary that we built in the last episode. Fly a little bit towards Rainbow Mountain and perch right at the top. We've started naming some of the parrots after some people in chat. And thank you guys for being a part of the Twitch streams if you have been. It is just twitch.tv slash waxfraud. Feel free to show up anytime. We stream every single day. And actually, lately, we've been doing a lot more of the YouTube streams. Recently, we actually built this big deep slate and stone watchtower. This thing kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but that was kind of my goal. We have the quartz parrot sanctuary with a lot of the lush green in it. And of course, Rainbow Mountain is made out of rainbow wool. So I thought the deep slate and the stone would look pretty good. This dog's head is always in the wool. Are you okay, buddy? You can go around back. We made this area start to look a little bit nicer, and we actually put some light sources back here so that no creepers can spawn. Pretty soon, though, we will be getting something built right here. We have the lake house that kind of started a build right on this lake, but uh, we need to get another lake house right on the other side. Is that a red sheep? Wait, hold up. We have a red sheep on the loose. Buddy, what are you doing here, dude? How How'd you get loose? Well, you don't belong over here, buddy. Let's uh, let's go this way. If, uh, if there's a stray wolf on the loose, you are done for. So we have the pink sheep right here, and yep, we have the orange sheep right here. So you belong right here, Buster. And how did you get loose? I don't know how you did it, but uh, I hope the other guys don't figure it out as well. We've actually been making quite a bit of progress on the Rainbow Mountain here on the other side. If we fly up over the Rainbow Forest and the top, we can peek over, and we actually have one entire layer done. We have light blue all the way to the regular blue and then back to the light blue that we've started on stream. I'm finding it a little bit difficult to build Rainbow Mountain around these iron farms. I should have built them a little bit, or at least this one right here, I should have built a little bit further away. We'll probably end up just making this all go straight up. And you know what? Actually, while we're here, we should probably grab a bunch of this iron. The auto sheep shearing wool farm is missing a lot of shears, so we could probably just take a bunch of this. These things are insane, by the way. We have so much iron, it's just constantly going because it's in spawn. So we have a bunch of double chests over here that are filled up with iron. We have all of these filled up with iron, and then recently we built a third one. These double chests are also getting filled up, and I kind of wanted to make a star, so I wanted to get one right here and one on the other side of the middle one. Five iron farms might be too much, but you know what? I, I think we need more. We also have this hooked up to the nether portal now because we just need to have everything hooked up. This one was actually pretty convenient because it hooked up right next to the nether hub. Next on the to-do list, let's drop these shears off back at the rainbow sheep shearing wool farm. How did this leaf just do any damage on that flight there? That doesn't make any sense. Daniel, what's good? How you doing, buddy? Also, Daniel's friend, how are you doing out here? You've been chilling on this raft for a while. I hope you're doing well. He's not looking at me. I don't, I don't think he wants to talk. We're not going to have that much room. Let's drop all of these iron off here and let's make some shears. Drop you off in the red, and boom, let's get you guys in the orange. I wasn't working on Rainbow Mountain for a while, because especially in the ancient city, we spent about two months down there, so now we have a bunch of time to work on Rainbow Mountain again. Some of these actually do have shears, but most of them do not, and so that's why we are here to save the day. Also, if you are wondering how we built this Rainbow Sheep Shearing Wool Farm, it is on episode 7. I always forget how loud it is in here, especially as you go down into the middle levels, like on level 3 and 4, it's, it's just, it's way too loud in here. <laughs> Next time we design an auto sheep shearing wool farm, I'm probably not going to put it in a tower formation. We're probably going to have to spread it out because this can be too much. Next on the docket, I wanted to fly back home real fast. I have some shulker boxes here. They are filled up. Yep, they still have some cobbled deep slate. Let's put this in the auto sorting system real fast. Let's get you right here. And it looks like we have another iron golem back there. Why? How do you guys keep spawning over here? He's just stuck in the vines too, of course. If you're going to be an iron golem in this town, you got to be able to wander around. If you're going to get stuck in the vines, if you're going to get stuck behind trap doors over there, you, you're going to have to go. Now we finally have some extra shulker boxes back, and we have this cat right here who is unnamed. You know what, buddy? We're going to take you back to the cat sanctuary. This guy is loving life. I like your attitude, buddy. You can stay. But this guy right here, I believe he is stuck. If we do that, yep, he is stuck. Sorry about this, dude. You just, you can't be stuck. 
Also, sir, you over there, get out of my wheat field. Thank you very much. Yep, get out of my wheat field. You knew not to be in there, buddy. I'm flying with the elytra so often, I never really walk through this area of the town. I always forget how pretty it is. I think our glass panes have been working too, because no villagers have made their way back into the well. Let's go. What about this well right here? Okay, it looks like we got one lonely guy. You can stay. Just you by yourself, I'm going to allow it. There's a lot of cows hanging out right in front of the cat sanctuary. Let's drop this guy off. And okay, there's actually a lot of cows hanging out right here as well. This guy is trying to start his own trend over there, but how many cows are in here? I mean, the cow tree by the bee sphere is one thing, but this is a whole other thing right here. We're going to have to take these guys out. Let's get the cat in. You take a seat right there, buddy. Enjoy your time in here. And what are we going to do with all these cows? I feel like since we got rid of all those iron golems, I, we should probably... Let, let's just spare these cows. You know what? Maybe one cow can go. All right, let's spare the rest of the cows, and you guys can just get out of here. How are y'all still stuck right here? That is insane. Uh, let's go right here. Okay, nope, that was an accident. Let's, uh... Go right here. Okay, nope, that was an accident. I promise you guys this was all an accident. I don't know how these cows are still stuck. You know what? You guys just kind of deserve it at this point. That was kind of ridiculous. Uh, you, you saw it. I gave them plenty of chances. We took down two stairs, a trap door, and a hanging sign, and they still wouldn't leave. And you know what? Just for that, I'm going to get this guy right here. Cows these days, man, they just have zero respect for anybody. Okay, and how many people are up on this watchtower right now? We have one, two, three, four, five, and six down there. Is anybody on the other side? Six people. That's a lot of watchmen. Wait, that actually, uh, I think six people might actually make a council. We're gonna have to name these council members so we know who's who. We don't need any tomfoolery between any of these council members. I had to spend some extra XP because I accidentally added an extra letter in there. And you know what? We're only gonna do five name tags because there's, there's not enough room for six. I'm gonna fly back up here in the middle of the night and see which one of these guys are chosen. Hippity hop around. I think we have council member number one, council member number two stepping right up, and council member number three. Are you gonna look at me? He won't look at me in the face, so we're gonna go over here. This guy's in a good mood. We're gonna go council member number three, council member number five. We're skipping number four because you know what? Number four, you're looking good. Council member number six is no such thing, buddy. See you later. I expect each and every member of the council to take responsibility over everything in the town. If anything wrong ever happens here, it's all on you guys. Do not let us down. We're going to make an igloo for the Arctic foxes. We first probably should go get a bunch of snow and a bunch of ice, which means I need to probably make a pair of leather boots that actually work for me. I usually just throw away all the leather boots because, uh, you know, I really don't need them. But if we're going to run into some powdered snow, I'd rather not fall through. Head down to the underground library. Let's get the correct books. Of course, we'll take a mending book and we'll probably need an unbreaking book here. We have a death strider book, but we probably should get a protection book here. I actually don't have any more feather falling books on me right now, but we do have a frost walker book and I think that'd be pretty fun. Got our nether boots on looking good. Let's actually fly back. We're lucky enough to actually have some nether highway tunnels that lead all the way back to the snow and to the ice now. What's up, Link? How you doing? Ouch, thank you. First things first, let's head over to the Arctic Tadpole Zone and grab ourselves some ice. We're gonna have to zoom all the way down. Ooh, there's a ghast poking through. What are you doing, buddy? But you're gonna poke through the nether and you are in G's Binston and B's Ginston territory. What's up, guys? How you doing? These are the guys that have been watching over the Frog Sanctuary for a good long while. This tadpole nursery we built a while back, but uh, it's actually just right in front of the giant arctic lake that we've been flattening out. Believe it or not, this used to be covered in icebergs, but now it is just, it's completely flat. We could make an ice generator, but you know, for right now, this is actually a little bit more fun, and I'm basically an ice generator right now with this Frostwalker boots. This is awesome. I never really play with Frostwalker, but I can see how this would be very convenient. Let's start chipping away at this guy right here. Well, that's going to be really loud. Grab as much as we can. Probably fill up about a shulker box or two. Looks like this iceberg actually goes real deep underwater. Next, let's take this big boy out. See you later, dude. Oh, nice. A little bit of blue ice over here, too. Ooh, actually, this is a lot of blue ice. All right, let's go. Typically, we can just combine all the packed ice, but you know, when we got a lot of blue ice down here like this, right out in the open, might as well just take it. All right, we get the last little bit here. We have actually a shulker box. Did we fill this one up? We, I think, we, yes, we filled this guy up. We're about to fill this guy up right here. I believe we just did. Perfect. And we got some blue ice with us. Let's head back to the boys over at the tadpole sanctuary. Pretty soon, we're going to have to get ourselves an ice farm because I don't want to have to keep on taking down these environments. 
Now this next one, uh, to get there, it's kind of actually all the way out in the open. The highway actually ended over here. We haven't gone that far yet, but the nether portal is all the way up in the sky. If we can get up here, only one rocket away, not too bad. We'll get this hooked up to the nether highway soon enough. But if we leap through the other side, I'm gonna get my sword just in case it's nighttime. And it's not! Okay, we are on the side of a mountain. This is beautiful. Okay, and so actually, if I fly up real quick, I did want to show you guys, this is eventually going to be a project. I found this bowl out here a little bit south of the village that we're making right now, and I thought that this was perfect to make another village. There's goats up here at the tippy top, we have ice and snow and spruce trees everywhere, and then we have a nice little oasis in the middle. I thought this place looked really tranquil, and I actually really eventually want to build something right here. But that is for another day. We did hook up the nether portals. We just need to get the highway hooked up over here so that we can get here a little bit easier. In the meantime, I am going to fly over here. Let's grab a shovel and uh, I think, yep, let's, there's some snow over here that we need to grab. As you can see, we've actually started carving out a little bit of this mountain. It's a really small snowy mountain, so I figured we're not going to build over here at all. Might as well just use it for some of the snow. I was accidentally using my fortune shovel. Let's use the silk touch shovel to grab the blocks here. Same thing, we'll probably actually just grab a shulker box or two. We're gathering the snow, it's probably about the same speed as gathering the ice, but we actually have made an automatic snow farm, and so you know what, maybe we should actually go back and show you guys that real quick. We actually built it on a YouTube stream all the way over here on the second island, trying to get some stuff built on the middle of the island here, and voila, we have a brand new little cozy farm. On the outside, it looks like a starter house, but on the inside, it is very much not a starter house. Actually, there's a snow golem in here that's providing us with all of the snowballs that we could ever ask for. That guy can just stay out of the way there. We'll get as many unlimited snowballs as we possibly can. Actually head down here. This is where our storage system is. It's nice and cozy. I don't have a bed down here because if I did put a bed down here, I have a feeling the villagers would try to make their way down there. This guy lost his job in the time that I was down there. I was like, that was like five seconds, dude. Hold up. Get over here. Get next to a barrel. There you go. But yeah, this thing is actually great for getting all the snowballs here. You can turn all of these into snow blocks and you have the snow right here for any terraced areas that you want to make. Get some polished blackstone buttons along the side of these here, just for a little bit of extra decoration. There's a couple things that I still want to do to this part of the island. Right now, it's all just marked up by these giant jungle trees, but I want to get a starter house over here and over here. Some houses on the river over here would be super nice. Pretty much just two more builds would complete this little mini island, and then we can wrap everything around all the way over to the other side. But actually, now that we have a bunch of snow and a bunch of ice, we can actually just locate a position where we want to build this giant igloo. We kind of have an igloo right here. This is an arctic sanctuary for the polar bears, but I mean, it's not necessarily an igloo. It's mostly ice. The one that we're building today is going to be mostly snow. This is still one of my favorite sanctuaries, though. This place is awesome. I love coming here to visit these guys, especially when there's no baby polar bears around. These guys are just nice and calm and fun to be around. But considering we have a giant ice structure over on this side of town, maybe we could go all the way to the other side of town and get an igloo over there. Flying over the fox sanctuary, I feel like we at least have to say what's up to the arctic foxes real fast because, you know, we're, we're building them a home right now. What's up, dude? How you doing? Uh, you know, are you antsy for a home? Look at all the berries on the floor. This is absolute. What's that noise? This guy is just stuck back here. You know what, buddy? We'll get you a home soon enough. You don't have to be stuck too much longer. Call me crazy, but I kind of want to build something out in the middle of the ocean right here. We don't have anything built right here. I mean, we have Rainbow Mountain in the distance. We have a villager transport system right here. We have a random nether portal and a trading hall. I think we should get a fox sanctuary out here. I mean, we have Rainbow Mountain. We have the villager transport system. If we fly up, we can see we have a trading hall. We have a nether portal, but that's about it. You know, I think let's get an igloo out here. First things first, we're going to have to go down in here and start building an iceberg. And I did say that the majority of this build was going to be snow, and it is still going to be snow, the igloo part for sure. But for the base, I think we're just going to get some layers of packed ice down below. Start building away from the town a little bit so we can make the circle just a tad bit larger. Whoa! Oh my god, this guy just... Oh my god, that scared me. See you later, buddy. I always forget at night the toolsmith trading hall looks insane, especially with this reflection down here. Let's see if I can complete this iceberg circle. So much ice... Okay, so that actually is a complete circle, but is it going to be large enough? We might have to make it bigger. Yeah, this also isn't even a circle right here, so let's uh, let's start adding some more ice. Now that is a circle, and the only reason I know why is because I actually made a circle using the snow here. It's actually 55 blocks all the way across. 
Right now, the ice is very flat. Uh, we'll get it moving down pretty soon because we do have the iceberg going down about four levels right now. I do want it to go down probably maybe about, me. I don't know, to say about three or four more. We'll just keep on adding ice to the bottom. That way, the Arctic foxes have a little bit more of a, a landscape that's not just flat. To make it look a little bit more natural, I'm on a couple blocks sticking out a little bit like that, and we'll probably bring the other layers a little bit closer. Making an iceberg is pretty easy, although it typically does take a lot of ice. Just a lot of mindless block placement. But for the time being, I do have the ice in most of the spots that I'd like it, so I'm going to hop up here real quick, and we can get to work on the snow. I actually am using a plots generator to get the dome working here. You know, I'm actually just going to use the snow blocks only, and eventually we'll probably get some white concrete worked in there, as well as some smooth quartz. But we have the 55 block wide circle right here, and we're going to move up. We just need to slowly go up each layer. I'm going to complete this layer one more time, and then we'll have to gradually make an incline. The snow is almost blinding. I also don't know if I like or dislike the sound of snow blocks being placed. So now the wall is four blocks tall, and actually right here seems off. I think this needs to be up three blocks, three blocks, and three. This needs to be right here instead. Take you out, and we can actually just craft these snowballs right back into blocks. Now on this level, we have a small amount of editing. We're going to go three, two, one, and then two. So actually on this one, we'll drop down, bring four blocks right here, and take this guy out on all four sides. Actually, since it's a circle now, it's going to be on all eight sides. Or maybe I'm wrong because a circle doesn't even have any sides because it's a circle. Also, I only meant to break the first row, not these next three. So we'll have to go down and break you, you, and you. The incline officially begins. Now the doors will start the incline as well. We have one, two, three, four blocks, and then we will officially start to go over right there. So we have four, one, two, three, four, and then we have two, and then we have three going right here. This build is absolutely enormous, and I'm actually just going to be using the plots generator, like I mentioned earlier, to make this dome, and that's probably the easiest way to make domes and circles in Minecraft. Unless you're just crazy cracked at the game, and you can make a circle or a dome without using any references. But I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty good task for a Twitch stream. And it's fun because on the Twitch streams, you can go bing, bang, boom, and, and bop. All of a sudden, you can just have a dome created out of thin air. For this layer, we're going to ride around the edges, and then we'll double it up. Getting to the top of the dome right now, where everything's starting to get flattened. Not too bad. That's going to leave a nice open circle. Let's actually take a look down from here. And okay, perfect. We're going to have a little bit of sunlight poking through. But this is wild. This is what the inside of the dome looks like before it's even decorated. I kind of want to take a look up here in the sky real quick at what the dome looks like just to make sure it looks even and oh, okay, yep, that looks like an igloo. Take a random spot in the sea over here and wow, this is this looking like a spaceship now. I mean, it does look like an igloo, but when you have the reflection of the water right here, this is this is crazy. It starts to look like a half submerged planet. Okay, and we'll get the texturing done on this later. For right now, it's actually all snow blocks. We'll get some quartz and some powdered snow up there eventually, but I kind of want to start working with the interior. So let's get some packed ice. I'm going to start making some ice spikes that are going to reach the ceiling. First, might as well just start making a bunch of random pillars. So we have a couple. We're actually just going to have to go down to the bottom. We'll start building these up so they look a little bit more natural. Give them a little bit more of a foundation down here. Once we start working these into the actual terrain, we can actually take... Ow! Hold up a second there, guy. That could have been a creeper. That's not good. This guy's over here just dancing around on the ice. You gotta get out of here, dude. You can also be out of here. Thank you, sir. But uh, what I was gonna say is if we work this into the terrain a little bit, we can start to actually take away some of the ground layers right here, too. Keep jumping up. We'll make this a little bit wider over here. And actually, we're gonna use soul lanterns on the sides just to make it a little bit lighter. We do not want any creepers spawning up here, like right about here. That looks like where a creeper could spawn. These skeletons really gotta get out of here. Buddy, you're just gonna sink. Why are you doing this? Tried to shoot some arrows right into my stone cutter. What's going on? I moved all of my materials out here on a little iceberg because actually we did have some creepers start to spawn towards the ceiling and some zombies. And so just to prevent anybody from exploding my shulker boxes, I just figured I'd move them all out. Started terracing up just a little bit and making a small packed ice bridge. I think the diorite slabs are going to be a good way to help get up there smoothly. We're going on the outside of this ice pillar, but most of them we're actually going to stay on the inside of because uh, we don't really have too much room on the outside of most of these. can make this just a little bit larger. Now they can have a little bit of a view of their own home, and this is absolutely wild. This is way bigger than the real fox sanctuary. This arctic fox zone is huge. Something I did want to do was take these little corners like this, jump down, and bring some small pillars right up to the top. 
That way it just starts to look a little bit more natural. I'm actually just going to bring some ice over this way. That way it can connect and seem like it was kind of melting into the ground. This will look better in a moment. We're just going to have to use a little bit more ice. Jump up here and get some on the undercarriage. Fill up anywhere we can see the diorite over here. This is actually awesome. I like this a lot. It's creating some unintentional caves and caverns. Gotta place more soul lanterns though because all I'm doing is creating more spots for creepers to spawn. Soul lanterns obviously don't bring near as much light source as end rods out there and the torches right here, but they are really nice looking on the ice blocks. And as we're climbing these stairs, I do want the ice to be shown, but I think I'm also going to have to start packing some more snow in here. Otherwise, we are for sure going to have to do a lot more packed ice runs. Just kind of make it seem like some of the snow has fallen out onto the path over here. And that reminds me, it's getting dark over here now, so we have chains and end rods. This is probably going to be a common theme throughout the whole build, but we're going to just hang some end rods here, and probably everywhere. And with just these three end rods on the wall right here, that's already adding so much light. The sun poking through right now looks absolutely insane. This is just like a winter wonderland. The shadow dropping down in here right now. I don't know, I just really like looking at this wall right now. Gonna have to start scaffolding up here a little bit if I want some end rods at the top. Get one right here, we'll get one over here, and we'll even go over here to get one right there. I'm really hoping we don't take a look back at this and think that there's way too many end rods. I like being up here though, because we have a little bit of an advantage seeing exactly where the soul torches need to go. And we'll drop down here, we need to use a little bit of scaffolding to get up here and get rid of some of this diorite. I like using it for the slabs, but it definitely does not look so good on the underside of the bridge. Big on diorite! Stuff like this little corner back here. You know what, I'm just going to fill it in with some snow because it's just, I don't know, I don't want these little spaces where the arctic boxes can get stuck in. So we'll have a little bit of a snowy area right here. Actually, you know, it probably would look better if the ice spikes had snow everywhere. Start slapping these everywhere, basically any spot there's not a soul lantern. And I do think it would be cool if we had the ability to add some snow carpet to blocks that were not snow. Like if we could just put some snow carpet on top of this ice instead of just only snow blocks, I think that'd be pretty beneficial. I also wanted to keep on adding some snow over here up to the packed ice bridge because I think the snow can make a pretty good wall. It kind of looks like a snow bluff when it's going up like this. Gotta get some snow on the ground over here as well. After a while of the mindless snow block placement, this giant bridge eventually turns into a vast snowy and icy landscape. It's kind of hard to gauge how big it is in here, but if we fly up and out of the igloo, it looks totally smooth, like nothing's going on in there. Then we fly right back in here. We have the mezzanine up here at the very top level. I was thinking, I don't want the foxes to be able to fall too far all the way down to the ground, so I actually gave them another small level right here. Might actually just cover a little bit of this up with some snow. End rods hanging from absolutely everywhere. This place is looking a lot more magical than it once was. And originally I just had the one staircase going up this way, going all the way up to the mezzanine around the side. But then I thought, you know, that's just not enough. We need more ice and more snow, so I decided let's actually just wrap it all the way around over here as well. Right down to this middle platform where I guess the Arctic Fox can definitely call their home center. Speaking of Arctic Fox, we should probably get those guys in here. And actually what I'm thinking about doing is creating a couple doors first. These are going to be tunnel doors, so we will probably just go up one, two, three, four, three in the middle up top. Not looking too bad. Let's get this about four deep here and see what that looks like if we jump away a little bit. It shouldn't be looking too bad. I, oh yeah. Looking at it from farther away, the door is nice and small, but just big enough to fit a bunch of foxes through. I'm going to put a bunch of spruce fence gates down here. Too high because the foxes will jump over them. Floating on down to the fox sanctuary. It's time to finally get the arctic ones out of here. I have a couple leads on me. I don't think there's too many. We got two right here, though. Hey, buddy, get over. Oh, my God, this guy actually has a lead on him already. Hey, dude, get over. Whoa. All right, we got one. Let's get over here. I believe we have at least three more. I forgot we had a baby fox over here. Let's take you out. Okay, we have four arctic foxes. Let's actually just head out while we, uh, while we have the chance. Open the door as fast as we can. Let's actually... Oh, my God, all of these foxes are ready to get out. Open that up, and okay, we'll close that. Open this up one more time, and close it. You guys are getting sneaky. No way you're getting out. All right, we got four arctic foxes. Let's take these guys on over to the igloo. I think these guys saw a chicken, because they are going absolutely wild right now. They, have, they want nothing to do with me. I think there's a chicken out there somewhere. You guys, you can't have the chicken. You, you gotta come with me. Honestly, it feels... Oh my god, yeah, he just broke the lead. Dude, no, hold up. Baby fox is trying to escape right here. Dude, stop doing that. Jumping down the side by the cliff wall and the shulker box storage hall. We are almost there, buddies. Let's go. Finally reach some water. Three of these guys are carrying leads now. That's just great. 
All right, guys, see that giant spaceship right here? Well, that's your new home. Okay, just gonna pass by the creeper explosion. Not really sure exactly how that happened, but uh, we're gonna have to fix that. Watching these guys slip and slide all over the ice is awesome, but uh, let's get them through these gates here, and hopefully we have everything closed off so that no one is able to escape. Some of them just took some naps. That was a long journey, but uh, you know what? Let's uh, let you loose. Let's let all four of you guys loose. This is your new home. Feel free to explore. Please don't fall too far from anything. I was actually just thinking, what's the only way to get some more Arctic foxes? Well, we need some sweet berries. And where do we get those? Well, uh, the exact place that we just came from. So we have to go under the fox sanctuary, grab some sweet berries from the sweet berry farm. Probably just about a stack, maybe two. I have brought the best food in all of the land. Let's go. Oh my god, this guy's just sitting here perfect, waiting for his berries. Buddy, hold up. Get your berry here. Boom, there you go. And over here, get your berries. Boom, there you go. Let's make more arctic foxes. And yeah. Now that we have living beings in here, let's start focusing on just a couple more types of decoration. Let's get some of this amethyst in here, because it just it looks way too good to ignore it. Like, we can turn this little corner over here from this into this, and it has so much more color and shimmer immediately. Go around all the edges of the pillars, going bang, boom, and bop. Heading up the stairs, I did want to actually get some more amethyst, but I also wanted to get some more light sources, so what I'm going to do is get some diorite walls right here, and this is actually just going to help get some more texture on the wall, as well as give me a little bit of an excuse to get some end rods here. I'm going to stay very consistent with the use of the end rods, but I think just getting them down on the ice is going to be useful as well, because I really do not want any creepers spawning down here. Get some in the corners up here, throw an end rod right on top. There's this whole middle area right here, I do not know if anything would spawn, but now I know for sure that nothing is going to. Let's head up to the mezzanine at the very top, get a couple of amethyst clusters up in here. The foxes at the top are going to want to feel fancy too. Also, I thought maybe every once in a while we could just spread some glow lichen around. I thought that would actually help increase the lighting and just some texture on the ice. Probably going to have to head back to the amethyst farm to get more clusters. We are most likely going to use them all in this build. And it is nighttime, which is dangerous because we've basically turned this uh, sanctuary into a mob farm. If I show you outside right now, there's probably at least 10 mobs that have spawned. Line up and around. Yep, lots of skellies. We got the creeper right there. We have an enderman right here even. I'm just gonna hold up. I don't even want to risk it. Let's just go down. It's time to sleep. Oh my god, baby zombie's already following us. This is unacceptable, mister. You need to get out of here. This guy's coming after me with a fishing rod. Who are you? I think maybe to light up down under the iceberg as well. Probably to prevent some of these drowned from spawning so much. Let's get some sea pickles down here. There is a skeleton all the way at the bottom down here just trying to... You, dude, what do you... You can't do that. Actually, you know what? Buddy, get out of here. This is not your fight. I'm going to stand right above you, and the arrow... You're just going to do this to yourself. For a while now, I've been thinking we pretty much only have snow blocks on the igloo, which makes sense because igloos are made out of snow. But just for some texture, I was thinking we have other blocks that we could add, like if we take this out right here and just add some white wool. I think every once in a while, if we replace some of this with some white wool, that's not too bad. It's a little bit of gray, but honestly, just the texture is more important to me. Going over here, trying concrete powder. That just, it looks amazing. We can just get this over here, kind of staggered wherever we want, and uh, it's going to look great. White concrete, I think, could have worked, but it really just doesn't have any texture at all. Wondering if a mushroom stem would work right here. Now that absolutely just doesn't work, and okay, yeah, the iron block I had to try, but nope, these don't work. Take that out, get it replaced with a little bit of concrete powder. Something else we could use is actually some powdered snow. We have a bunch of buckets. We could fly back over to the mountain real quick. Finally back over here with my millions of buckets. I think I actually ended over here last time with a little bit of pow- Is this powdered snow right here? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's actually take that in a bucket. We can take all of this too. Unfortunately, it doesn't really stack very well. It's only really one bucket at a time, but you know, that's just the way it is. Sometimes it do be like that. Three shulker boxes is enough. Also, it's nighttime, so let's just get out of here. Let's see exactly how much texture this brings. Let's put it up high just a little bit. I don't want any foxes to be able to jump out. The slightest variation in texture, but honestly, it's worth it because it's just, I just want it to look nice. I'm also going to have to hide these, but I want to get some twisted vines kind of growing up everywhere, but uh, I know it's going to have to require some grass. So I was thinking we could just have this grass drop down right here, get some twisted vines on that, put some inconspicuous snow around it, then we'll just bone meal this up. And, ooh, nice. I just wanted to add a little bit more color, and with the weeping vines going up to the ceiling, this is looking really nice. We need more foxes, and we need them now. He's sleeping. Where's the other foxes? Another sleeping fox right here. What's up, sleeping fox? Okay, it was today when I found out that you can take twisting vines and just grow them anywhere. You do not need the grass, so I'm just going to have to go over here and take this out. 
No need to even hide the grass at all, they just grow right on the ice. We have about a hundred arctic foxes in here now, and we're about to have even more. We just gotta keep feeding them all these sweet berries. You can have some, and you know what, over here, you can have some. You, sir, and you, sir, everybody can have some sweet berries. And this sanctuary just is absolutely wild. The one thing I actually wanted to get down on the bottom was to fix a couple of these ponds. There's a couple areas where I made one block deep ponds, and instead of some packed ice on the bottom, I thought it'd be cool to put some wart block down here. Hook this up. It's a nice greenish teal color, but honestly, when you pop back up, it looks great. Get that last guy in here, and can we bone meal it up? We totally can. See, now that looks way better. This place is booming with life now, though. All we gotta do is get more baby arctic foxes, gotta get more amethyst clusters in and around everywhere. Probably hook some up near the edges of the pond. In this fox sanctuary, I mostly just hear a lot of screaming and snoring. These guys do a lot of sleeping and definitely a lot of screaming. We are going to continue getting a lot more clusters up here because, you know, just the more the merrier. But guys, that is going to conclude this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all the Patreon supporters that came in this week. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you to all the YouTube members and Twitch subs as well. You guys rock. Episode 60 is coming out next week. I am super excited and I cannot wait to get that episode out. I cannot believe we also have a home for the Arctic Foxes now. This is just great. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I do appreciate y'all. Take care of yourselves. Do something nice for somebody and I'll see you guys next time. Hi, everybody. Wax Fraud here and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. Today we are back in the Arctic Fox Sanctuary. These guys, uh, I think they're ready to make a lot more baby Arctic Foxes. You get a berry, you get a berry, and you get a berry. Everybody up here sleeping, you're gonna get yourself a berry. The more of these little baby foxes, the better. It's all snores and screams from all these foxes. But this is still my favorite sanctuary. I love this thing. Look at these guys, they love it. I'm actually gonna hop out the front door real quick because I did actually make a brand new dispenser. With this thing, we can get some baby chickens down. Oh no, I'm hitting foxes by accident. Well, I guess this isn't the best design after all, but I'm still gonna get some more chicken eggs down there. I have a quick fix for this so that none of the foxes get hurt anymore. Now I was thinking we're gonna have chickens on the frog lights, but oh my god, they just jump right on the frog light. This is crazy. As you can tell, there's a small difference from the last episode, and that is all of the lighting on the outside. I put some end rods going all the way down towards the bottom just to prevent a little bit of the spawning. Kind of accidentally turned this place into a mob farm. But we got everything fixed, and this place is looking fantastic. And today, we actually are building that glass factory that I've been trying to build for a while. But actually, we have a couple things that we should do first. I'm going to fly through and grab all of the dyes that we need to make all of the colors for the glass. But we need to actually grab some bread because we've been going through a lot of villager relocation on the streams. And this guy is in my wheat field. Sir, how many times do I have to tell you to just stay out of the wheat field? I'm going to do that, I'm, and then I'm going to leave. I've taught many iron golems the same lesson I'm going to teach you. Please stay out of my wheat field. Be gone, sir. Getting all the wheat we can. I'm going to turn it all into bread to take over to the villages on the outskirts of town. We have a taiga village now to go along with the savannah village and the desert village. Nothing like some good old seed planting to start the day. I cannot believe we are on episode 60. That is crazy. And by the way, guys, thank you for watching up until now. I really do appreciate all the support. Grab all the extra bread, make ourselves a little extra, and, you know, let's save some for later. If I may, I'm just going to swoop down here and sprinkle some bread in the sky. There you guys go. Everybody eats. Okay, so we have bread everywhere. We have a bunch of little guys already. I'm going to make at least 20 of these guys to send over to the village. Just got to make sure that there's enough beds. And you know what? Pretty soon I'm going to be making a nitwit sanctuary. I'm going to keep all these nitwits around. Once I collect at least five, six of them, I'm going to get a sanctuary going. Looking for a minecart to take these guys back, though, real quick. It doesn't seem like I left one here. I could fly back to go get one, or I could... Sorry, buddy, but I could just use you for a, a minecart resource real quick. I'm just going to simply jump over here and shoot you like this. I don't I don't think he'll be able to get up here. If he can jump up here, that's wild. Please just don't be able to get up here. Looks like I'm safe for now. Sorry, buddy. You're going to have to be gone. Jump down here. Grab me some of the iron and we will make a minecart. Actually, this is perfect. I'll put you in there. Looks like you're a farmer, but I don't know which farmer you are. None of these. <laughs> is this your job? Looks like that was actually his job. Let's uh, let's send you back. I will see you in the town, buddy. Goodbye! Seems like none of these guys really have any care in the world where their friend just went. They're all just kind of hopping on beds. Gonna get a really good night's sleep, even though their friend just got sent into a cave. 
flying back over next to the armory. Oh my god, did I just get shot at? I think I did. But it seems like this guy over here is already in place and decided he wants to be a fisherman, so I'll get you out, buddy. I'm gonna try to push you to where you can path fine. Let's get off the minecart tra- there you go. Let's try to get off the minecart tracks here. I think this guy thinks he's trapped, but really he is not. I just need to show him the way- there you go, buddy. This is the I'm not trapped anymore dance, in case you guys were wondering. I'll we'll have to stop back through this nether portal real quick, because we did link up the Taiga Village to the nether highway, so might as well just take that. After all, it is a much shorter journey. We might as well go over here and say hello to Link real quick. What's up, dude? Ouch, that hurts. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, I might as well show you guys, we did complete a little bit of the walls. I wanted it to remain very simple, but uh, still have the natural look, so as soon as all of these glow berries flow all the way down, it will be pretty much done, but I have all of the white stained glass and the stone brick stairs getting everything put together here. This is definitely the coziest nether hub that I've ever made. And I actually didn't know this, but uh, these hoglins, they can spawn on top of your shulker boxes when you're not using them, so I just put some iron trap doors on top of them and laid them sideways from now on. Let's fly over to that Taiga village though, we have way too much to do. We are back and it looks like this village is thriving. We got a bunch of dudes, got some iron golems, and some little dudes. Start making it rain some bread everywhere. Do you want some bread too, buddy? There you go. Forgot I had a cat over here. Guys, what should we name this cat? Please let me know what you want to name this cat in the comment section. We have a Taiga village cat that has no name. This guy has no bread either, and these guys are making a baby villager. Let's go. More bread for both of you guys to congratulate you. Okay, so this place is getting populated very quick. These guys have cool outfits on too. I actually don't know which villagers are my favorite looking. Poking through to the desert village, and I guess, well, this is, that's not much of a village. I guess we do have our puppy over here. What's up, Shloop? Shloop's been holding down the fort for as long as I can remember. Uh, these three towers are definitely collecting as, oh my god, that's, I was gonna say iron. That's a lot of poppies. But we are collecting a lot of iron still. And if we can fly through here, we'll actually go all the way over to the desert village. And that reminds me, I guess I don't really have another portal over here. But the iron farms are close enough. Let's walk around and leave a trail of bread everywhere. I don't want any of this bread, it's all yours. We have another nitwit over here. I think we have at least four of them already. Took me a little bit of taking these barrels and composters out, but we have one guy ready to go. This guy's just in the way. Hold up, buddy. Please move. Of course, he gets sent back down here. Dude, I just took this composter away. You are not allowed to be a farmer. Please go this way. Watch, he's going to try to be a fisherman. Yep, there we go. Taking these away again. And okay, you are jobless and you are on your way. See you later, dude. I know it usually takes a while, but honestly, I really do enjoy relocating all these villagers and getting all the different villager types into one place. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we actually do have the cyan layer done on the second Rainbow Mountain now, and it's actually getting kind of nice looking in this canyon. Guy looks absolutely gorgeous in the sunset. Oh, where'd your minecart go? And where'd you go? Our guest looks like he's about to arrive without his minecart. Oh, never mind, he's got his minecart now. Fly right past us, and it looks like you're gonna be- Oh, already got a job as a farmer. You're doing great, buddy. Now we just gotta keep getting more and more of these guys in the village. I love having a bunch of color. I was back with the council, asking them a few questions. They were actually telling me that everything is okay, so no reason to uh, worry about anything. But uh, they were telling me that I don't have any of the Arctic Tundra villagers in here yet, so I should probably go grab those guys. I'm actually just gonna pop through the portal next to where G's Binston and B's Ginston live. Actually, wait, where are these guys at? What's up, dudes? How you doing? Didn't mean to disturb you guys at the Frog Sanctuary. I hope everything's going okay over here. I'm looking for the Snowy Tundra Villagers, and I think the first place to start looking would be in an area that looks just like this. This seems like a large enough snowy area that there's gotta be some sort of village back here. Polar Bear out in the middle of the snow? What are you doing out here, dude? Usually these guys are on the ice. I'm thinking in the distance I see a mini ig- Yeah, that's an igloo. Hippity hop my way over- Oh, what's up, Rabbit? How you doing? Is this just a regular igloo, or are we gonna have some other stuff down here? Well, it looks like we may have found a home instead of a zombie curing center. What do you know? Actually, next to these ice spikes, I do see some village tops. These buildings are peeking up over the mountains, and these guys are wearing blue. I have not seen you yet. And what do you know? There's another nitwit right here, and oh, that's another- uh, There's two- There's three nitwits down here. Yeah, these guys' blue snowy jackets. These guys look cool, and we gotta bring them back to the village. First things first, we're gonna make a nether portal so we can get these guys to and from a lot easier. Boom, we are in, and I wonder how far we have to travel. Looks like we are up high in the Basalt Delta, so I guess we're kinda safe. So I'm flying up here real quick, we have the portal right there, and if we actually dip down below everything right here, we can start to see the nether highway, and we have our gold farm. Haven't been back to this beauty in a very long time, but we actually, uh, since we've been in the Mesa, we haven't really had any need to come back here to AFK for gold. 
The mesa is loaded with gold, but I think this is actually where we need to connect. Back to the nether hub to grab some materials. Time to head pretty far through the nether highway. I believe we're actually going to go past the point where there's even some glass. Yep, it looks like the ceiling is gone right there, and the walls are about to end pretty soon. Actually, everything itself is about to end, and I did take a mark as to where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be at Z-198, which is where we are right now, actually. So that worked out pretty well. I just need to be a little careful, and uh, we can just start going left right here. Break through this nether rack and see how far of a tunnel we have to go. I think we have about 200 blocks. First comes the blue ice. Next comes the oak buttons on the blue ice, and then we're going to get some slabs to the side. Then along the edge, we'll get some stone bricks, and we'll cover this up with some glass. I thought this were the piglins for a second, which would be bad, because I do not have my fancy pants on right now. Doing my best to avoid all the hoglins, piglins, and the ghasts. Every five blocks, we're going to put an extra slab down. Then after you check your six, make sure your surroundings are safe. We're going to put the frog lights in, and we're going to go every five blocks. I'm explaining this to you guys because I haven't really been to the Nether Highway in a while, and those of you that are new to the series might not have really ever seen me build this. Get the trap doors on top of this guy right here, and the warped crimson trap door, I mean, actually needs to go to the side. Once you get all the trap doors on, we're just going to get the newest feature, which is the blackstone buttons on here. Got the hallway almost complete, just finishing up the last few touches with the blackstone buttons here. All the way down to the end, and we do have a new portal that we can link up, boom. What I'll probably do is break this real quick and, oops, actually I need to jump down and grab that, jump up into here again. I need to jump, but there's so much glass to break. All right, let's fly out and grab that old portal. There you are, buddy. Okay, so you're going to be gone and uh, this is going to be loud. With that one taken down, this should be the only one left. Let's see if it takes us back to the village. And we are connected. Let's go. Just going to lay a couple more beds around town so that they can get to breeding. Couple of workbenches here in case there's any issues. Also, I'm just gonna run down here, start tossing some bread around town. You guys over here, let's take some bread. Hey, you over there, buddy. Take the bread. Take it all. There are a couple places around this village that are a little dark, so I'm gonna light them up. I don't want any creepers spawning. What I need to do is get some of these guys to get up the hill, kind of like how he's doing right now. You're doing great, buddy, and uh, I'm gonna get him over to this nether portal. Hey, you, sir, on the bed. How about uh, you get in the boat right there? Well, actually, it doesn't work like that, so let's just take him out, and there we go. Got him in the boat. We finally got a Tundra Villager. Now it's time to zoom, zoom, zoom all the way back home. Slowly but surely. Oh, wait, sir. No, 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 no. Get back in the boat. All right. I was going to say slowly but surely getting this guy back in. Let's push you to the portal. See you, dude. Now we're through, and I'm just going to get you in the boat right... Wait, nope. There goes the boat. I'm going to open this up for you, open that up for you, and this right here is your home, sir. Get out there. I'm gonna give him a second to get acclimated here. You know what, sir? You can take this bed. It's all yours. Actually, while we're over by the nether portal, I wanted to show you guys, we have a brand new automatic fish farm. I'm gonna fly over next to the polar bear sanctuary real quick and show you guys all of the fish that we can get. We can get the tropical fish, raw cod, the puffer fish, and a load of bone meal every time we AFK here. It's actually pretty easy to make. There's just a bunch of magma blocks that are situated here to make sure that the fish are only alive for a little bit of time. We are going to fly up to the AFK station. If we go right here and stand about right here in the middle, look straight down, you can kind of see the poofs. There's some white clouds that you can see, and that's just the fish despawning and turning into the materials that we're going to use for trading. All right, buddy, I'm back, and we're here with a brand new boat. Are you going to get in it? Uh, you don't really have a choice. Hop on in, and I'm going to take you over to the town. Welcome to your new home, bud. Of course it starts raining as soon as I drop him off. Well, I guess that's the life of living here. Gonna have to get used to it. It's awesome having another type of villager here. We just have to get the swamp villager here now. But actually, instead of doing that today, we'll do that at a different time. I want to show you guys what we did in a recent long play. Never really seen this in the rain, so it'll be kind of cool. Ooh, it is lit up pretty well with these end rods and amethyst. But this right here is the natural hot spring that I had built on a long play. And thank you guys for watching if you did. We used a lot of ice and snow to make it feel very cold. And we also used a lot of the basalt, polished basalt and blackstone for the rocks. I've been meaning to build something like this for a while now. I took inspiration actually from some Icelandic hot springs. And I just think it's super cool that it's nestled right up into Rainbow Mountain. It's funny because Rainbow Mountain used to be a desert and now it's slowly just becoming an icy tundra. Now that we've taken care of all the shenanigans today, I feel like we have something to do now. And that is find out where to build this glass factory. 
I've mentioned it in previous episodes, but the reason I'm going to build this giant glass factory, or pretty much just a storage system for all of the glass, is because we have only one, actually two barrels in here for the glass, and that's it. We have the regular glass that I used all of my stained glass, and the tinted glasses here as well. Then we have the panes that are all in one barrel, and I guess I also have this shulker box that's filled up with all of the stained glass that we used when we were making that disco. Whoa! That was an awful way to wake up, dude. How about you just stay away from me? Now, I want this thing to be kind of like a space station, so it's going to have to be kind of large. I'll probably make it at least 70 blocks across, and to make it odd, it'll probably have to be at least 71 blocks across. The tallest and most prominent building out in this direction is the brewing tower that I'm on right now. So I'm thinking, out in this ocean, we don't really have much. I was going to build some ships out in this harbor. We haven't done that yet, so uh, maybe out in this ocean, we could build a giant space station-looking glass factory. I like this area a lot. We have the brewing tower that we can see. We have the docks over here with the harbor. Frog sanctuary and the tree farm are pretty close. Honestly, over here seems like a pretty nice place to build. What is going on all the way out here? Sir, I thought we were done with these shenanigans. We haven't had a villager try to escape for a very long time. What are you doing? Also, I see an escaped polar bear in the distance. But I guess we gotta take care of you, sir. Let's just get you right there. You know what? Actually, you know, you can stay out here with me and you're gonna watch me build this thing. I think right here looks just to be about where the center could be. All right, here goes nothing. Let's start building up to the surface. One, two, three, four, five this way. We got five on the other direction. Let's make this at least 71 across. Making a giant circle is nothing a Twitch stream can't handle. And before you know it, we are building the towers. We have actually 16 of them going up. All of the colored stained glass has its own individual tower. This guy's absolutely loving it so far. We have a lot of deep slate going in the middle. I think we have to light it up with quite a bit of glowstone, and I'm debating on whether or not to put the colored stained glass on the floor. Let's coat the sides with some glowstone real quick. Then we're just going to start lining up each individual color. Looking at the water through these colors is going to be pretty nice. And ooh, look at the stained glass on the brick down there. It looks pretty cool. The sun shining through these is going to give a colored glow to all the blocks below. Looking through the yellow stained glass into the water is a very vibrant experience. I'm loving it. This guy over here is loving it. And you know what? I think I know someone else who's going to love it too. There's a polar bear over here who's all by his lonesome. There you are, buddy. Why are you out here? You know what? It's time for you to come watch the build as well. Looks like this is Magpie right here. All right, you're coming with me, bud. Oh my god, there's three other polar bears out there in the distance. Why? Why do you guys do this? Gonna start building up from the ocean floor. We'll put this here. And you, sir, you are gonna watch me build. Thank you, Dolphin, for the unsolicited grace. Let's go over here and plop all other three in here. And now we have four polar bears that are going to watch us. I clicked on the lead for a split second, and these guys just dipped. They are gone back to the sanctuary. See you guys. Pick up some leads here real quick. That was my bad. I misclicked. We still have Pappy, and we still have... Who is this? We still have Pat. Thanks for staying to watch, guys. I appreciate you for not escaping. Trying to incorporate a lot of this colored stained glass into the towers as well, so I might use those as windows as we get a little bit taller. Also going to take a second real quick to shout out circles in Minecraft. We do love a good circle. Last couple of layers can go over here. Get the light blue fixed in with the blue right here, and then we will move right into the purple glass. I think it's going to be this floor and the disco floor that are my new favorite floors in this game. Finishing up the last of the deep slate tile barrier. Then we'll finish bringing this deep slate brick tower up. We gotta make sure they're a little bit staggered though, so nothing looks exactly the same on every side. It's nice to have it be symmetrical, but if these towers can be just a little bit different height, that would be very nice. Hop over here, raise this guy up just a little bit. The villager that was watching us in here is gone. Don't even go asking where he went, because I couldn't tell you. But I am loving this floor. I really do want to add maybe one more shape, like a square going this direction. I think a square not necessarily meeting on the corners here, but meeting somewhere in the middle would be pretty cool. Time to start taking these out one by one to see which type of square looks good. See you later. Let's get that deep slate in here. So much glass in the water. Got to make sure we're picking it all up. Coat the sides with some connecting glowstone. Also, while we're collecting all the spare glass, we could use some of it to make some panes. We could get some of the color going on the towers. Let's say we hop over to this tower right here. We have a small doorway going through, and actually I did forget to put one piece of glowstone right there. No scaffolding with me, so I'm just going to tower up using the structure material, but uh, we could make some windows here. We're going to have to go with the red panes on the first one. It's so dark, I can't really appreciate these colors. And that's some lightning. We're going to have to go back over here and take a nap. Not bad, though. We could have some glowstone running through here to make the colors shine more, or we could have some lava running through. 
Am I... Am I crazy, or did it just strike lightning in the middle of the day? Am I- I think I'm crazy. I have never heard that or seen that before in my life in this game. If you guys have ever seen that before, let me know, because that- that was wild. Now, I don't know how this will look, so we'll just test it out on one tower here. Let's just get lined up with the glass panes, drop the lava, and we will float down. Let's just see, is this gonna look nice? Gotta hop up. No deep slate brick left behind. You know, not too bad, except for, I think, yeah, on this door down here, I did forget to place some blocks so that it doesn't flow through the door. But that is an easy fix. Let's just take this lava away real fast, and we'll make a little bit of a room. Finishing a little platform here. This room is only going to be three blocks tall. Gotta let this lava flow through. It is just inching along. Come on, buddy. Down you go, slowly but surely. Last block I'll place right there, and that was actually just the perfect amount. Let's go back up and get the lava bucket back where it needs to go. Should be looking good now, we just gotta get this replaced on every tower. Getting these colored panes in is gonna be looking nice, but I think I'm actually only gonna be going too tall. I might put these bricks back into place because this next level right here, I kinda wanna make a little bit of space for it. Every little bit of decoration we see on the C level, we're gonna put on this level as well. But what that means is the red tower all the way over to the green tower probably gonna have to edit the top half because I prematurely built them up a little bit too tall without building this floor first. Get all the extra deep slate out of here. Get the last of these guys out and in order to replicate the amount of glowstone that we have down here we're probably gonna have to go sell a bunch of iron, get some emeralds, and buy that glowstone. Heading all the way back to spawn in Rainbow Mountain over here to the three brand new iron farms. Let's grab one from the middle here, or at least a couple, and yep, looks like we got a bunch of poppies now too. Rainbow Mountain, I do promise we will get you done one day. We should probably drop half of these off at the Toolsmith Trading Hall over here. Let's hop in, get to the barrel, and actually we already have a little bit over here, which is nice. Trade for some emeralds, do a little bit of mending if we can. Right now, selling iron to the toolsmiths and the weaponsmiths is definitely the easiest way for me to get XP. I haven't made an enderman farm yet or anything like that, so I know there's easier ways to get XP, but right now it's definitely the iron. Hop into the weaponsmith trading hall here, let's drop off some of these goods. And of course, trade for a couple more emeralds. How's everybody doing? Hope you're all doing well in here. Especially you, buddy, I hope you're doing well. Now we leave with all the loot, go over to the cleric trading hall, and buy a bunch of glowstone. These guys get all of the money because they got all the goods. And howdy do my clerics, I hope you guys are doing alright. Floating past the airplanes on down to our new construction project, and this is looking great. A lot of deep slate though, if you ask me. We get down to the floor over here, there is a lot of color though. Soon as we get this glowstone added, all that stained glass is popping up here as well. Adding this roof is going to get rid of one thing that I think is amazing. Actually, if we go down to the sea and under it over here, now this right here is just absolutely amazing. If you guys put stained glass in a rainbow order on the sea level and you go under the water here, you get the sun rays flowing through it and man, this is just awesome. Unfortunately, once we get the roof on, this is going to go away and there is actually just one column here holding the whole building up. Since we've already laid out the rainbow rows once before, it's going to be easy to do it again. Sun keeps going down, but we're going to have to keep working through these nights. Accidentally laid the magenta across. The magenta and the purple stained glass look a lot alike. It's a little confusing. But on this level, I was thinking, I know I'm adding the rainbow blocks as I'm saying this, but we have a lot of deep slates, so it's starting to look a little bit neutral with only one color here. Even with all 16 of these towers being made out of the deep slate bricks, it's not really different enough. So on the same Y level on the outside of the build, I'm going to hop up over here on the scaffolding. Let's jump down, and we'll actually just build right here. We'll end up making these walls right here a little bit taller because I want this to be almost halfway, maybe just a little bit taller than halfway, but right now I'm going to take these stone bricks and go all the way around the perimeter. Unfortunately means that some of these windows that I made over here, like this guy right here, is going to have to go. I'm actually running out of scaffolding, so I need to run back over to the bamboo farm real quick. I never thought I'd see this day, but we are out of scaffolding. We finally made a build large enough to require a lot more than normal. Setting up some scaffolding systems over here, and I'm, now I'm realizing that I don't really have a platform to walk in and out of outside, so let's actually make some stone platforms out here. All of these towers could technically be a door, but we might leave some of them closed for now. I can actually jump over and get inside of the build from pretty much all of them. Going around the perimeter one more time. Except we'll go about three blocks wider this time. We could actually use an exact circle design if we wanted to, but just make it a little bit larger than our first one. 
And you guys probably could have guessed at some point in this episode we would get to uh, an area where we need to bring in the wall defense to chain to lantern action. In this case, it is going to be an end rod, but first we go wall, then we're going to bring the birch fences in. We got the chains right here, and then I believe we brought the end rods with us. We did, so we're going to hook them up right here, and that is looking pretty nice. We can get some of the walls hooked up over here as well. We should honestly think about getting some of the fence gates in as well. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. On the corner here, we'll go a little bit different. We'll go two fences, two chains, and then we'll get the end rod on the bottom. All right, now nothing is going to spawn outside here as long as we get these end rods going all the way around the perimeter. Let's get up here a little bit. I kind of want to replicate it up top as well. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. I'd like to still use some end rods up on this level, but we'll probably alternate it with some torch flowers to make it look a little bit nice up here. Or we could trade in a couple of the torch flowers for an every once in a while birch fence with an end rod on top of it. I do like the way that that looks. It's going to make the towers look a little bit cooler too, I think. Before I get this middle section done and move on to the top part of the towers, I did just want to thank you guys again for uh, the patience on all of these episodes. I know that uh, they used to come out a little bit more frequently, but these builds recently have been a little bit larger and taking me a little bit longer to get completed, so the episodes have been taking a little bit longer. For that, I do apologize, but I do appreciate your patience, and thank you for still watching. Can I get a bing, bang, boom, and bop? Wow, this is kind of insane. These sunny rainbow rays are actually showing up on this second level, so I didn't even really have to say goodbye to the ones down below because I didn't even really know that we'd have them inside the build all along. We're not even done with the second level, but I'm really loving the way it looks so far. I was also thinking that this lava right here, it's going to eventually burn down all of the birch fencing and the birch fence gates that we had ended up putting over here. I don't want to get rid of all the birch, so I figured it's probably easier to just get rid of the lava and replace it all with some glowstone. Glowstone actually has a little bit of a more neutral look anyways. This right here, it's a little bit just too orange. We will glide right on over. We still actually have to take out these top two layers of windows, but we'll go down here right now. I don't want any creepers or anything to spawn in here while we're not working. Mob prevention always feels really nice. <laughs> Especially since we were just building at night on stream, getting everything decorated here, and a creeper had just spawned somewhere, maybe on one of these towers or against the side of the walls. Actually, if I jump down here, creeper exploded on us, and I really do not want that to happen again. So we have a lot of lighting over here now. Should be prevented for the most part. We have the stone brick circle down here, and I'm really hoping that no creepers spawn. Actually, I'm just going to quickly do a test, though. I'll jump out, and let's turn around. We're at a point where some creepers could spawn down here, and if they do, we will figure out exactly where that is. What's up, polar bears? How you doing? And actually, you know what? I'm not really seeing anything. Hop up on the tree farm to get a good look from far away, and this is looking very majestic. First time we've actually built something like a castle in this world, and it's nice that it's out in the ocean. I like it all the way out here. What are you doing down there, bud? He despawned as soon as I had said something, but I'm feeling like what we did with all of these end rod towers and spikes along the wall, I kind of want to get that along the bottom as well. Taking some stained glass to correct some of those windows, and whoa, the sun rising is, this is, wow, this is beautiful. Hopping out this way real quick, we actually have some windows on the outside that we need to get edited. Got the purple windows right here, we can hop down, run over, and got some magenta stained window, there we go. And we just gotta hop in, I really don't want anything to spawn in here, so if I can look right there, and boom boom. Also, if I just get some glowstone around the edges like I should have done already, that would definitely help mob prevention. So let's get some of these walls lined up. Kind of feels like the only spots they belong are really where the corners are. We can try a few things out here. We'll get birch fences right here. Get some end rods on top. End rods right here as well. And you know, is that is that just a little bit too much? Let's fly back home real quick. I have one idea. I feel like you can never go wrong with flowering azalea leaves. Let's just actually place these around the side and see what it ends up looking like. If it's too much, we'll take it away, because it's pretty easy to take all this out with a hoe. But I actually have a feeling it's not going to look too bad. Got to make sure to fill all these holes in. Okay, those leaves do make it pop, but now I feel like we'd have to finish this upper part of the tower. Couple things to do here. We're going to jump down, close the gate. We got to break you, and we'll break you. We're going to put some deep slate bricks in. This is basically just going to raise the windows up by two blocks. And I have fallen again. Break this guy here, break that guy, we'll put a block there, make another window. I'm glad I only really started to do this on the red, orange, yellow, and lime green, because this would have been a lot of work to get all this replaced, and actually since the night time is coming, I don't want anything to spawn down here, let's get some glowstone in. Slowly but surely, we will find the height at which we will stop building these towers, and you know what, I'm actually a little traumatized from that creeper explosion, so I'm not working at night anymore, we're gonna go down and sleep. 
A lot of those explosions have happened on stream, though, and again, it is twitch.tv slash waxfraud, so if you want to join anytime, feel free. We do stream every single day, and we have popped quite a few totems. All right, I think we have the ceiling done, and I am just never going to get over the angelic look of the rainbow sunlight pouring through here. There is so much life in this build now, but once we get a little bit closer to the corners, I mean, there's a lot of purple on the walls over here, but once we get a little higher up, it's mostly just deep slate, so I think we have a little bit of wall to fence to chain to lantern action going here today. Pop two chains in here, and then pop an end rod right there and right there. Climbing up the scaffolding, let's break it, place some water, and then break the rest of it. Break this block right here, replace it with a soul sand, and then we will get some kelp on top. Then we break the kelp all the way back down, and we now have a bubble elevator. I think right now the only other thing to do to this bottom layer is to cover up this glowstone with some of the oak trap doors so it's not entirely too bright. This guy over here has just been shooting us all day. I'm going to keep letting him because it's the only way that he has fun. Everybody is entitled to their own fun around here. And I think the last little touch of lighting that I wanted to put out were these little lanterns just for... I don't want anything to spawn, so just in case we're going to put these here. Now, as far as the top goes, there's a few little pieces of decoration. We do have some torch flowers. Let's get these on the bottom on these stone brick walls. Then up top on the deep slate tiled structure here, I would like to get some of these spruce trap doors going as well as some ferns for a little bit of extra color. Now that right there just makes the wall pop a lot more. And for the final touches on these towers, I guess let's just build up right here quite a bit until we reach the top. Let's actually go right here. We're going to get a pot with a fern in it. Two birch fences and two chains as well as some end rods right here. Plop some on the other side over here. Let's take that out and okay, those are not looking too bad. Lights at the top are kind of replicating the ones down below, but I like it. Got all the ferns in here, got some lanterns up here as well. I'm just going to cover everything up with a layer of these spruce trap doors. The trap doors actually made the build pop quite a bit. If we fly over, it really makes the top a little bit more prominent. Let's go back to the good old tree farm, and wow, this thing is crazy. Look at this guy down here enjoying his view. Well, we now have a place to store all of the stained glass in this game. Everything except for the tinted glass. I know I used a little bit of tinted glass for the windows right here, but I think we're going to use a little bit of an extra storage system for those. For now, we do have each corner, all 16 towers with an individual color. We have the light blue panes and as well as what we have left of the stained glass. We can walk out though and we have an entire paradise in here. This is absolutely insane. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. You guys rock, and I just do appreciate all the support. All the new Twitch subs this week, all the new YouTube members this week, and Patreon supporters that came in this week, you guys rock. Thank you. Episode 60 is looking very magical. Thank you guys so much for watching me build this very castle-esque type tower. Well, 16 towers, that is. I don't even really know what to call this build, but I'm really happy that it's here. Wow, I cannot believe that we just built an entire planet. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today we are completing a little section of this nether highway. We gotta get the blackstone buttons on these frog lights. Get the last two right here, and we have the nether portal hooked up. It's brand new. This one actually connects straight to the ruins that we had uncovered for episode 37. I'm over here right now gathering a bunch of cobblestone. This thing is absolutely nuts. These trail ruins are super fun to uncover. We definitely got to get more of those going, but today we are going to be building a concrete planet. Let's grab all of the stone, cobblestone, and andesite that I can get from here. Taking all this back to the starter house. I have a bunch in the auto sorting system, but it's nice to have a little bit left over in the starter house. As I'm traveling back home, I was thinking about some possible advancements I could get in the nether, and I was thinking, we have never really traded with a piglin. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm gonna park my boat right here. I'm thinking we take a quick little stop down at the gold farm. Also gonna say what's up to Link real quick. What up, Link? Ow, thank you. Stronghold ruins gold farm, swamp farm this way. Let's take this boat and head down. Been a while since I've gone all the way here. Dang, this thing is looking magnificent. Drop all the way down, and I think the baby piglin should still be trapped down here. If he is, I'm not sorry he did it to himself, and yep, he is still right here. What's up, dude? Well, this thing is working. We definitely have a bunch of gold nuggets here. Let's take a bunch out. How many bars can we get? A lot of rotten flesh left over. We have one stack of bars. What can we get here? A stack and a half? Not bad. A stack plus 56 is pretty good, considering we haven't really AFK'd here. Now I'm wondering, can I get the oh shiny advancement by throwing this guy right here a gold bar? You want that over there? Hey, okay. 
Is he going to trade with me? I don't think he's going to do anything. I gave him the gold ingot and he just gave me an end rod that he had already stolen from me. This can only mean one thing. It's going to be regular sized piglins. The baby piglins probably do not give you the achievement. Can't believe that guy just traded me for something that he stole from me. Let's go all the way back home here. I'm actually going to take the twisted vines all the way up. Let's take these vines out of the nether hub. Let's find ourselves a regular sized piglin. Actually, I see one all... Oh, I see two over there. Let's fly over. Running up on you, bud. And I got a little bit of gold here for you. You guys want some of that? He's just staring and they threw stuff at me. I got obsidian and a nether brick. Got a bunch of blackstone and some string too. Oh, gravel as well. These guys just keep throwing stuff at me, but I did not get an achievement. Now, this is possibly because they need to be hostile towards me, so I could actually just take this off real quick. I have nothing gold on me real quick, and then I'll just throw this at you. And that's an advancement right there. You know what? Here's some more gold because you guys are so nice and giving me stuff. Thank you for the crying obsidian as well, buddy. I don't know what's going on. There's What is happening? There is so much noise. Hey, you got some Soul Speed 3 boots. Not bad. Man, it feels good to get that achievement out of the way. We got some hoglins over here. Let's put our pants back on. Let's actually go to the igloo that we built two episodes ago. We have an escapee that I actually need to return. These arctic foxes are always causing some trouble. First, I gotta put everything away. I can hear that bone meal farm going strong. Actually, if we go over here, we should have a bunch of poppies that are still... Oh, actually, these are beetroot seeds. There are the poppies. Those new iron farms have been making a lot of bone meal for us with all those poppies. And what's going on, Santa? There is an arctic fox that somehow got on top of the igloo and ran onto the side. Maybe during the construction of last episode. I'm not really sure how he got out here, but here's the igloo, and the arctic fox is over here somewhere. I think if I jump down this way, I should be- Oh, he's actually right here. Dude, how did you get over here? If I can get you on a lead right here. Perfect. Let's jump down. Sir, don't take too much damage. Oh, I'm sorry. Follow me this way, buddy. I'm gonna get you some sweet berries. Open up the gates quick. Get in here. Oh, why are you sleeping, sir? Hold up. Let's go this way. Take you off the lead. This is your new home. I hope you enjoy, sir. Got all the foxes back in their home now. These guys sure are sleepy. Now we can go to the build that we made in the last episode, which was the giant stained glass factory. Let's head over there. The newest installment of the hardcore world is probably the most detailed large build that we have now. We have the tops that are going to be filled up with all of the spruce trap doors, and the middle is all filled up with the stained glass. This thing is crazy. It took a while to build. We float around the side. We have lime green, yellow, and orange. We have the green over here that turns into cyan and light blue. And each of these tower holds just a little bit of uh, each of the colors here. We have a lot of the blue stained glass. We have some of the blue stained uh, panes up there. And if we come through, it's the same as the top, but it's just super mesmerizing because we have a bunch of rainbow shadows. And when the sun is poking through like it is right now, it just creates this misty rainbow fog effect, and I just love it. Definitely my new favorite place to run around in circles for no apparent reason. Let's run out real quick. There's a taiga cat in the village that we actually never named, and uh, what's up, new friend? Hope you're doing well. I'm gonna jump over here so you can't hit me, and you missed. First, we're gonna take a quick pit stop over next to the starter house. We have an iron golem that's been stuck for a very long time, and I thought it'd be cool to give him a name, and I was just thinking Daryl right here. He's just gonna be stuck, and uh, he's gonna be our new favorite iron golem. Daryl, I really hope you enjoy your time stuck out here on the cattails. Now to get the cat named over here, I actually have plenty of suggestions that I could have used from the last episode's comment section, and I do appreciate you guys for throwing out all the suggestions. We have a dirt path that we made to connect both of the islands. Eventually, this right here is going to be a suspended bridge, but this is a project for a whole other day here. I'm going to actually take a left turn. Could have used the nether portal over here, but I wanted to show you guys the dirt path that led all the way over to the Taiga village. And we actually have a cat over here that's about to get named. And what's going on, Taiga? How you doing? Oh, we got another cat up there, too. Bunch of baby villagers over here. I hope everyone's doing all right. Now that we got Taiga named over here, we can actually run through the nether portal. We're going to use it to get home just a bit quicker. Hop in the boat real quick. Take a right turn and zoom, zoom, zoom. And we hit a chicken, dude. You got to get out of the way. Thank you, buddy. Keep forgetting there's random chickens in this hallway. I have a shulker box on the main floor of the starter house I should grab here. Just got a little bit of sand in it. And you know what? I should actually use another shulker box to grab some gravel because we got some concrete powder to make. Let's see what we got right here. Okay, that's a double chest filled up. Let's uh, let's get the shulker box filled. And just like last episode, let's go upstairs and grab every single color of dye that we can. Might as well grab a stack of each of these. Give me the blue, give me some purple over here, give me the magenta right there. Probably just gonna stick to the colors in the rainbow, so sorry about brown and the grays and the whites and blacks, sorry about that. I'm gonna fly over to our old concrete maker with all of the materials we got. I'm gonna say hello to the council as we fly by. What's up, council? 
I love how if you listened closely, they actually did say hi back. We're gonna fly through our little jungle here that we still need to get out of the way. And here is our makeshift concrete maker. We can pop in this way. We actually just have any concrete powder that we can load into here. And I believe we actually still have some of... Oh, that's actually all sand right there. But we still have some concrete powder that we haven't used and some concrete that we haven't used as well. Place everything down here. We'll get actually just a little bit of dye. We'll get one, two, three, four of the sand. Four of the gravel here. We'll get the crafting table out. And let's make ourselves some red concrete powder. Get eight stacks of orange next. We'll get eight stacks of yellow going. I don't know why, but it actually looks very satisfying to place all of this concrete powder in lines right here in the shulker boxes. All right, now that is every color that we're going to be using. Probably not enough. We only have eight stacks of each, but uh, let's actually just get going on making all this concrete here. Very simple concrete maker, but we actually have to take some of the concrete powder and replace it with the totem. We'll keep it over here next to our offhand. But then you just place, and after a while, you're going to have yourself a bunch of concrete. You could also go this way. This is a little bit more fun. You can just take some concrete powder right here and just bring it like this all the way up in a tower. Go all the way to the top and we'll drop down only to take out the tower just like this. You can just chill down here and just keep breaking all of the powder as it drops into the water. Sometimes this can take a while, so I'm thinking a Twitch stream will probably be able to take care of this. And that is twitch.tv slash waxfraud if you want to join. We do stream every single day. You know, maybe we should actually pick a location first as well. I kind of want the sphere to be out in this ocean, right behind the Toolsmith Trading Hall. I haven't really built anything out here yet. Probably, you know, just about right in this area. Let's fly back to grab a bunch of temporary blocks. You know, this right here is probably what the planet's going to look like, except this one's a lot more see-through. Back into the starter house. Our temporary blocks are going to be upstairs on the second level. Running over. Let's jump on the cake over here. Let's get a couple stacks of dirt. And let's use the dirt to find ourselves the best place possible. We have the igloo over here, the toolsmith trading hall, the back of the town over here. But nothing in this ocean yet. I'm thinking, actually, you know what? Let's just go right here and build straight up with the dirt. Up we go. Let's get high into the sky. Now, we want this planet to be at least 100 blocks minimum all the way across. And so in order to ensure that it can be that big, we're going to have to make sure that we're staying away from the build height limit. That was one stack of dirt right there. Let's just use one more stack of dirt, and then that should be at just about 120 blocks above sea level. And look at that. Now when we're on the beach on the back side of town, we're going to be able to see this planet from the distance. Then we'll start the bottom level of the planet here. This is just going to be red, and as you guys can probably tell, we're going to use orange, then yellow, then lime green. Go up in a rainbow fashion. But we're just going to work on this layer by layer. I'm already out of the red concrete, which means we need to head back over to the makeshift concrete maker down here. Pretty soon we'll get one inside the planet, but for now we're going to have to continue using this guy. Make sure our totem of undying is in the original spot. We have all of the red, orange, yellow, green, lime green, and cyan in there. We have all of the other colors out here as well. Now we just got to get to building, so let's take these guys over to that red platform. Got a couple of each color. We're going to fly out here. It's all the way up in the sky. Yeah, it's all the way out here. I decided I want this planet to be at least 101 blocks all the way across. But this is going to be my first ever planet that I've ever constructed. Got a nice circle going already. We can start to move up with the orange concrete. Then we can start popping out the yellow because we got a red disc. We got an orange disc. Now we can move on. This is about to be the most colorful planet of all time. Moving into the cyan and all of a sudden we have a giant bull. We passed the greens and we actually passed quite a few of the colors. And now all of a sudden there's some chickens here as well. It was a pretty fun Twitch stream actually getting the initial part of this planet done. The middle is looking a little empty now that the bowl is getting complete. We ran out of cyan just now and we are starting to run out of colors as we move along. We have a little bit of the light blue before we run out. Sunlight's running out too. It's all fading away. No! The moon is rising and if I look down I can barely see the toolsmith trading hall. We are just in a void in the sky. Kind of just made a mob farm up here too right now since it's not lit up at all. But uh, I think we need to actually go back down. We need some gravel and some more sand if we're going to make enough concrete to get this planet done. Head back down here real quick. I don't think I have too much. I actually just had, I think this is all concrete powder. Back at the starter house real quick. I don't remember if I have enough sand to continue, but I'm pretty sure I'm all out of gravel. Yes, yeah, we're out of gravel, but oh wow. Okay, sand we are good on. Let's go get some gravel. I know there's a bunch in the nether. We could go to the nether portal, but first I'm going to go check out the stony shores beyond this jungle. I'm pretty sure extreme hills are actually the best place to look for gravel in this game. There's a lot of gravel in the extreme hills, but the stony shores, I know for a fact there's some here, and it's a lot closer. 
I haven't been lucky enough to find the extreme hill biome yet, but we did find a bunch of gravel right here. A little bit of this over here, a little bit of this up here. Then we can pop through and gather all of this over here too. We have a whole shulker box and then some. I think this is enough to hold over for now, probably at least until we get the half of the planet done. We have stacks of pretty much all of the dyes except for, it looks like green, we're gonna need more. Good thing we have a brand new cactus farm. Ooh, and some cyan, hold on. We can get the pitcher plants and grab, I think, a bunch of cyan dye with these. Okay, yeah, looks like one stack of pitcher plants makes two stacks of cyan dye, that's pretty nice. Gotta float on over to the second island over here, right past the beet farm and the automatic snow farm to our brand new automatic cactus farm. It's right over here, nestled into the corner, right next to the mushroom farm. Looks like this tree over here might have been burnt down by lightning or something for a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but over here still looking a little bit cozy. We can take all this cactus and get that smelted. Run all the way home. What's going on, Santa? How you doing? Let's get this stuff turned into that green dye. Back to the concrete maker with all of our materials, and I think this might be the last time we end up using this guy before we take it down and move everything up to the planet up here, and hold on, this, th oh, this thing is looking crazy. This is only like 15 levels too, we still have like 80 more levels to build. We're living life on the edge again without our totem of undying, I hope nothing is behind us or around us on this beach anywhere, I'm just a little paranoid. We only really needed a little bit of cyan to finish that one layer, and I'm actually just realizing right now I need to fix my elytra and mend up my pickaxes. We need to hold up. We need to trade with some emeralds real quick. On my way to get some emeralds, and of course it starts raining. It is always raining. I'm going to use all these emeralds to buy a bunch of glass from these librarians. I'm going to turn it all into white stained glass. It feels really nice to see the pickaxe get away from that zero durability mark. I guess it's kind of nice that it's raining because we can see the nice effect of the glowstone as we put it down the middle here. Up we go. Nice to have some light finally in this big old bowl of darkness. These chickens deserve at least a little bit of happiness. We use this as sort of a beacon for the middle and uh, I need to jump down. Let's make some white stained glass. Bada bing and bada boom. We have a bunch of stacks of the white stained glass. Let's actually just go up three and I think it'd be nice to bring all of this up to at least halfway up the planet which means slowly shoving this bed out of the way and also moving these shulker boxes out of the way. And you know what? We could actually take out one layer and just go every other layer and leave a space in between to create a little bit more of a smoky effect. Smack these guys out of the way. And I keep on picking up chicken eggs. I guess the more the merrier. Ooh, got a baby chicken. Let's go. Also, this is probably going to help use only half the materials I was about to just use. Wow, okay, look at the warm glowing effect around the glowstone down here. This is awesome. The glass is also nice because it's going to prevent any mobs from spawning in here that would have. Had to go back down to the good old skeleton XP farm. This is just as good as a bone meal farm as ever. These guys are all going down. We have so many stacks of bones already. And each stack of bones makes three stacks of bone meal. And we also just hit level 250. Not too bad. Over the past couple months, I have been organizing this place down here just a little bit because I actually came down here a little bit more often than I thought I would. We have a little bit of an area to put the gold and get that down into nuggets. All of the bows we get, we can just move into the grindstone, disenchant them, grab some XP, and move them into the bucket so we can make a dispenser eventually. We now have a little bit of a leather and chainmail storage down here as well. All of these bones we got should make about two shulker boxes worth of the white dye. Let's grab all the glass we can and make as much white stained glass as we can. The smoky effect right now is looking pretty nice. You can barely see some of the chickens that are getting stuck down here. These guys are just fading into the distant fog. Glad I chose the white stained glass though, because any blocks that are not touching the glass right now are just making the contrast super vibrant. We're getting kind of close to halfway. I feel like we're a third of the way built right now. A 101 diameter block sphere is way too big for my own good. When we're done with this, we're gonna have a lot of white stained glass to get back in that new stained glass factory storage. Also, I don't know if you guys can see it from where you're at, but when I am highlighting a block in this fog, it's super colorful. Slowly approaching the top of this glowstone too, we only have about maybe 10 to 12 more layers to go. I am loving the reflection of all these little mini chickens down here, but I am collecting a lot of eggs also. We should start throwing these just a little bit. Three baby chickens right away, let's go. Probably should get some up here as well. Also, I'm gonna continue to shout out the plots modeler all day long forever, because I never would have been able to make a sphere this fast without it. Especially now since the rings are getting pretty big, they're about 80 blocks across, which means we're almost at the halfway point. Pop back a whole other layer here with the yellow. Starting to look pretty good now that we have our third layer going. 
Got most of the layers of the stained glass here. I'm going to get more chickens right here, and then we'll move some right up on this level as well. You guys have a very important job of just hanging out on this very specific stained glass layer. Ran out of glass, so of course we are spending a lot of time down in the librarian trading hall. These guys have just as much glass as I will ever need. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Let's hop over here. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I think I'm going to eventually decorate behind here in this hallway because this is actually just a little bit faster than kind of having to swoop around all those bookshelves. This is the hallway that I used to get the zombie back here to get all these zombified villagers cured, but uh, now I guess I could get it decorated. Sounds like a job for another stream. Way too many stacks of white stained glass to make still, and of course it's raining, it's always raining. I feel like I kind of just made myself a giant bowl of milk. Each layer of white stained glass is making the bowl milkier and milkier. All these guys are just getting wet in the rain now. I feel kind of bad, let's, uh, let's cover them up. You know guys, I guess you could just take two steps to the right and you'd be very dry, but I, I guess I'll just do all the work for you. I'd be frozen too if I found out I was spending eternity in one of these layers. That should finish this up right here. Okay, we have a lot of chickens. I'm going to keep throwing more and more chickens as these layers get a little bit taller, but I think this might be one of the last layers of glass. Let's get this all the way to the middle. We finally get to touch the glowstone that we set initially. Let's fly away for a moment. I haven't really taken a step back yet, and oh my god, this thing is huge. You can barely see the glowstone all the way at the bottom now. And all of this white stained glass should prevent anything from spawning. The only problem is this outer ridge of concrete. One solution could be just jump down and start throwing a little bit more stained glass down here so nothing spawns. Or we take a moment to build the rings up. I'll actually throw some torches down on this orange layer and we should have a little bit of security. Sir, you gotta go. See you later. And you, sir, out there, you gotta go. Take that. Oh, wait, that's not enough. I guess take that. Oh, God. Wait, 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 sir. Get out of here. You are causing too many problems. Let's go prone for a moment. You're gone, and you over here, sir, you're gone. All right, and with all of these torches now into place, we actually should finally have a little bit of protection. Nothing is gonna spawn here. Now we can finally build in peace. Let's, uh, let's get a little bit of this going. Then we can move on to the concrete again. I keep thinking I'm really close to halfway, but now I'm really sure we are close to halfway. Back on the orange, we got four, three, two, three, two, one, two, one, and then another two right here that's going to lead into a bunch of ones. All the way across over here, I believe that's another one. Back on the other side, going into two, and then one, and then two right here, and then we have ones all the way across. We have the torches on the yellow layer and another layer of torches on the light blue blocks, but we're probably going to have to get some up here on the orange now. I should have done this ages ago. This is working wonders in regards to mob prevention. Getting concrete here because we are just running out over and over and there are phantoms all over trying to mess with me here. Hold up. We already have a stack of the phantom membranes. When are you guys going to learn? Get over here, buddy. See ya. Head back in here. Grab some more concrete until he comes back down. Get over here. I dare you. Look at you guys on fire now. What are you going to do? Get over here. I dare you. Phantoms are never going to learn. I'm going to go back to making some concrete. Eventually, we'll be able to finally move this little concrete maker up to the planet. Got about eight stacks of the new colors, and whoa, this thing is looking like a planet. Believe it or not, we are not halfway done yet. Luckily, some of these layers near the halfway point just start to replicate themselves, so I can just move easy on the borders like this. Looks like the sun is coming up. Ah, oh, beautiful. As you can see, we kind of been slacking on the white stained glass a little bit. I've been leaving the milk in the cereal bowl a little bit lower than it should be. We'll get the bowl finished here very, very soon. But right now, I'm kind of just shifting my focus mainly to the concrete because 101 blocks all the way across is very big, a lot bigger than I intended. All of our stuff down there looks so small and so far away. And now being in here makes me feel like I'm in an arena. I feel like these chickens right here haven't moved in a couple of days. It's kind of freaking me out. I like how you can start to see the circle in the middle of the planet. Now, I think the light blue is the exact midway point. But I'll consider this halfway done as soon as we have that circle done. Now, we just use the red and we're going to start to inch our way inward. Got more yellow, got more orange. We should be looking good. And yep, of course, there are phantoms out here. Hold up, guys, please. All I want to do is build my planet. Leave me alone, please. Le leave me alone. Sir, I'm begging you, leave me alone. 
Now there's a zombie. Get out of here, sir. Thank you. Please get out of here. And a wandering trader. What are you doing out here? What do you got for me? Okay, purple dye. Oh, coral blocks. I'll take those. This thing is absolutely crazy. It's starting to render in just from this side of the beach. Even back here at the leather worker trading hall, if we turn around, the planet starts to come into existence. This thing is enormous. I'm thinking we're going to take this middle circle out later and we're going to replace it with some glowstone and maybe some glass for some giant windows. I had to start placing some torches up here as well because, you know, I mean, I don't want anything spawning up here. If a creeper blows us up up here and takes out some concrete, that's no good. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then I believe we need just one, one, two, one. And these ones all the way across in the middle here. Dude, this is insane. This bowl is huge. In fact, this thing is getting so big that we probably need to start... Yep, exactly. There's a skeleton all the way down here. We can shoot him down, but we probably need to start getting some torches up in here. Get a few on the oranges over here. We can fly over, maybe get some right here every once in a while on the red over there too. Can't really reach it. There we go. Just gotta hop down and hopefully stuff stops spawning. Each and every layer that we create makes this place just a little bit more mesmerizing. I cannot wait to get to the top. It's going to look great. And actually, what I'm thinking is these guys are just still just they're so still. So let's break this. Let's break this. That's awesome. It turns into a rainbow cube when they're floating. But what I wanted to do was, you know, just put some water right here and let's get these chickens moving just a little bit. Let's get them spread out. For some reason, they're just hanging out by each other. Let's just, uh, you know, let's get them out there. Plug that back up. Plug this back up. And all right, where are my rockets at? Let's go get that yellow layer on. Right here, this yellow is going to mark layer number 80, I believe. So we're going to just place a few right here. We have four blocks of space. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. We got one, two right here with one, two. Break this guy. We have one right here with one, two again. If you guys are wondering what the streams are like, this is pretty much what it is. It's a lot of me just counting, trying to figure out how to get this thing to be perfect. But each layer that we work on gets faster and faster, so I'm excited as we approach the top. These are only going to take a few minutes each. Boom, 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 bing, bang, a little bit of boom over here with a bop. Wow, we are on day 8,951 at the moment, which gives us 49 days to complete this planet before day 9,000. And you know what? We can do it. I believe in us. Luckily, we have a lot of torches on the outside, though, to be able to prevent the creepers from spawning, because if we didn't have any torches, man, this would be a mob farm. Hey, look, you can see my shadow all the way over there. What's going on, little shadow? Couple more layers, gotta get the blue finished here. I am gonna miss the circular shadow moving all the way across the sphere during the day, but we do gotta close this up. These layers are starting to become too wide now, which is nice. Now these corners just need to be beefed up a little bit. Moving on to the purple. Gotta zigzag our way down this way. Now we can move into magenta real fast. And this might be the last layer that I put at the top real quick. So I do want a way to get in and out for the time being before I start making windows and tunnels. This layer is looking like it is going to be extra thick. These ones are a little bit more difficult to eye out because you're not necessarily just counting circles. You're counting wider block pellets. I think this is a nice opening. We could actually cover this up with glass, maybe go up a couple more layers. But for right now, I just need it open so I can get in here and start to build up a little bit. We need to light this place up other than the light coming from the center. This Oh, wait, we have a hole in the center, too. Looks like it's light blue. I'm going to have to take one block up there and get that put in. For some reason, I grabbed 40, but there we go. Since this thing is so massive, I'm just going to fly away for a moment, and wow, okay, this is crazy. I am just absolutely blown away right now. The circle's not complete, you can see we still have to get the top done, but we will do that later. This circle over here, though, if we take a look right on the edge, I think this could make for a good window. I want to use some glowstone for the windows, but uh, we're going to have to go buy some more, so I'm going to have to sell some more iron to get more emeralds. Might as well mend the tools here as well. I'll take all the glowstone you guys have, thank you very much, appreciate that. Man, I really do appreciate the clerics for providing so much glowstone. I'm glad we don't have to go to the nether to get so much. Just gotta fly until the planet just appears into render distance. That is crazy. Okay, so for the perfect circle right here, stuff can spawn right there. Let's bring a pickaxe and let's try to land right on the corner. Perfect. Let's break this open and that open. I guess we'll start right here and we'll just start inching our way forward. I feel like the glowstone is kind of a more neutral color than all of the frog lights and the sea lanterns. So that's kind of why I'm going with the glowstone. As far as the insides go, I feel like I should probably just jump over here. There we go. Let's actually just break this down. Probably going to replace this with a giant glass window. I really got to be careful, man. There's so many things that are trying to kill me in here now. 
Honestly, it feels very satisfying taking away some of the concrete after placing so much concrete in the past couple of days. And if you guys weren't here, this has been taking about five days total worth of Twitch streams, and it's been a lot of hours of live streams. So thank you guys for being here during the construction of this. This took forever. Buddy, I don't know what you're doing down there, but you're never going to reach me. I'm just going to stop you in your tracks. Well, and of course, we're already making mistakes. Let's take these away. And then we'll replace this pink right here. All right, so that should be it. Okay, perfect. Look at that window. This is nuts. Now we can get in and out from one side. What if we did all four sides? We'll have four entrances from each side, plus one from the top that'll be slightly larger. There's so much room to fly around in here. This is awesome. Building these circles and lighting them up, though, is going to start to get a little dangerous, especially with all these creepers right here lingering. So what I'm thinking is we're probably going to have to get some lines of glowstone going around the center. Starting from the top, let's actually just take these two out. We'll go boom, boom. One at a time, down the blue, down the purple. We're definitely going to have a lot of blocks to go pick up after this. You be gone, you be gone, you be gone, you be gone. As we start to get down to where it's a little bit more steep, I'm probably going to have to start towering up with a little bit of this glowstone too so it doesn't start to look so separated. Yeah, it's getting very steep down here and some of these aren't even touching so we're going to have to continue towering up for sure. I don't know if I like the way this glowstone is looking. Let's just fly into the inside real quick. I just want to see if it's... Uh, I mean, it is giving it a little bit more light, but is that the way we want it to be lit? This is kind of... It's a little strange looking. I feel like we should just use end rods, kind of like how we did with the igloo. Yeah, this thing could be lit up with end rods on the outside for sure. If we fly down here right below us, I actually lit up this igloo from a couple episodes ago with end rods on the outside, and that actually worked wonders. I usually just actually, oh, oh, I'm in the powdered snow. This is not good, and now I'm falling. Well, uh, what's up, Arctic Foxes? How you guys doing? I guess I uh, just am saying what's up to you guys now. This guy has my scaffolding. Jeez, this thing is massive. It takes four rockets to get all the way up here. Yeah, okay, let's take out this glowstone. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit of a waste of time that I just did, but we'll replace all of the blocks that we took out. Then every block that once was a glowstone is now just going to have an end rod on top of it. At first, I was thinking glowstone was the most neutral lighting source, but end rods really are the most neutral. Plus, they give a little bit of that glimmering effect. Spider, you are not welcome here. We're going to have to get this lit up. We're going to add a bunch of end rod fixtures, and these are all going to be connected with chains here. One over there, three right here. We'll put another three right here. Then we can drop down. I have a small line of end rods already, but I would like to put one right here and there. And if we keep dropping down, I would like to... Actually, you know what? The end rod does go right below this layer of glass. We could continue to go straight down. And these guys are falling. Okay, what's happening? Is everybody coming up? Everybody coming down? What's going on? Okay, just a moment. Let's take a step back. I want to find a way to do that without having all the chickens escape. But these windows are looking good. We just need to continue adding all of the chains right in between all of these end rod towers. Get one right there. Get three of them right here. This place looks like a giant observatory, but really all it is is just a simple concrete maker and concrete powder and concrete storage. Fly on over to this side over here. We have no chains. This is a chainless area. We got to get some chains right here and right now. Got one right here, one, two, three, and it looks like we do have a few torches that we left to take out. Start to take out the torches on the side and replace them with some end rods here for some decoration. And of course, it's raining again. It's always raining. This is looking absolutely outstanding. I, I love the roof here. I just, you know what, let's finally sleep. We'll get the rain going away here. Let's fly out the top. I kind of want to move the concrete maker exactly where all of our store. Oh my God, all these mobs up here. There's so many. Look at all of these. Let's get out of here before anything tries to start shooting us. Let's just, uh, let's go straight down. Let's get that concrete maker, all of these materials, pretty much everything right here. We're just going to move it right up into the center. You treated us very well, concrete maker. I appreciate everything you did for us, but uh, it's time for us to move on to bigger and better things. Let's take the dispenser. Let's take the observer. Popping all the way back down. This place is awesome. I love flying through here, man. I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of this. Look at the layers of shadows going through all the stained glass right now. Let's get a nice little layer of quartz bricks going around the center. Then we'll line the bricks up with some quartz stairs. Time to replicate that concrete maker, but I'm actually thinking right now this glowstone little tower right here, we could have this be a portal where I could drop straight out of the concrete maker when I'm done, but that would mean actually moving the concrete maker back to about right here. Get an upside down stair with some glass panes on the side. That way I can have a little bit of a window. Why not? Especially when we have some beautiful stuff to look at. Small difference this time would be using the minecart with a hopper. 
Gotta have both of these guys facing downward, so let's put the redstone dust right on top. Now, in order to get the items to not fly out the back, let's just put some spruce trap doors in. Also, shout out to Ajax Minecraft for this design and tutorial. I loved the video. I'll shout it out in the description down below. Instead of using a sign to block the water, I'll use a glow lichen this time. And oh my god, I only have one glow lichen. I guess oh, it is what it is. Ooh, also, okay, there's a few torches that I missed right here. I'll have to take them out as soon as it's safe. There's definitely going to be a creeper that tries to spawn. And there's a bunch of zombies right here. Let's just hop in, get back to the safety of the concrete maker. Anything that tries to fall from up there will perish. One glow lichen right here, one little piece of water right there, and that's about it. Alright, and as far as storage goes, we should actually just get a nice barrel system set up right behind the quartz. We're gonna develop a little wall here at each corner. I think that'd be pretty cool. Especially if we add some glowstone and some flowering azalea leaves to the top. Let's get these in each of the four corners. Then we gotta pop down and light these candles on the four corners of the quartz. It's nice having a little fort in here. We can get in and out with these fence gates, and I don't think anything's gonna be able to spawn in here, but even if they do, they're not gonna be able to get past this little barrier. And if anything were to get past the gate, we do have a nice little escape pod right here that will actually allow us to just shoot right down the center and back into the ocean. And all the way down here we go. There's a couple chickens I noticed that are down here. What are you guys doing? One last thing I wanted to do to the very top. Level 100 is this red. I could add orange for level 101 to actually make the top complete, but I want to leave this open so I can fly in and out from the top. Very curious to see what this looks like from the bottom. Let's also fly down. I have some brown concrete powder that I need to use because I've never really made brown concrete. So let's actually just, uh, let's throw it right here. Put that in the offhand real quick. Let's make a little bit of brown concrete because I actually didn't really have any to throw into the storage. Run around the back side. We do have some now. We can throw it over here to complete the storage system. Throw you guys in and bam. We have the white, light gray, gray, black, and brown over here. Completing with the rainbow colors. And I would say that that actually is going to complete the interior of this build. There's not much else I wanted to do. We have a lot of empty space, but I actually really like that. This only really is supposed to function as a concrete maker. And that's exactly what we got. Smack you out for good measure. Okay, well that was not a good idea. Let's just put that back, and okay, thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and again, I really do appreciate your patience on these, I know this one took a long time to come out, but this planet is huge. It took a while to build it, and you guys are the best community anybody could ask for. Thank you to all the new Patreon supporters and the Twitch supporters, as well as all of the new channel members here on YouTube. Thank you guys, that really means a lot. I am just still blown away that we actually made a planet in this world, this is just so crazy. Having this thing render in and out is my new favorite thing in Minecraft. I'm just loving this. Thank you guys so much for watching the 9,000 days video. Here's to 1,000 more days. Hopefully we can get to day 10,000. I really do appreciate you watching this video. Remember to take care of yourselves and do something nice for somebody. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.